Hey everybody, it's JJ and we're back again for another Asus PC DIY hardware live stream. Uh, we've got a lot of things to be able to go ahead and jump into this week, guys, in terms of just a lot of new product announcements, of course, with one of the most exciting announcements being, of course, the introduction for the Ryujin 3, which if you guys don't know about it, it's our latest next-gen AIO cooler. It's a really exciting AIO cooler, and we're going to definitely be talking about it in this stream, but we do have a full, essentially, first-look preview in yesterday's live stream, which you can actually find on the ASUS North American YouTube channel, as well as you can actually find out about a featured post with a lot more details inside of our ASUS PC DIY group. In addition to that, uh, we're gonna definitely be diving into a couple of different items in terms that we've got, let's see, uh, give me a second to bring this up right here, but we've got a number of new, uh, essentially updates this week in terms of brand new, brand new products. So we've actually got uh, a couple of B760 based motherboards we're gonna talk about from our Prime series. We've actually got uh, further updates to our GeForce RTX 4070 series based graphics cards, including the introduction of our ROG Strix series and also the white dual model, which I know a lot of you have been interested in. And then we also have two cool updates in terms of our monitors with a new VA series monitor and a new VC series monitor. And also not pictured here, we're actually gonna be talking about our latest update in terms of our Zen Wi-Fi line with the uh, Asus X. T9 Wi-Fi solution, which is actually going to be a really great option for those that are looking for a tri-band based product, gives you a lot of coverage, really nice performance uh, in a compact, clean design. So we're going to be touching on that guy as well. And we've got some actually awesome promotions as well. So if you guys are looking for some deals on a wide range of items from everything from some cool RGB apparel, excuse me, ROG apparel uh, to, of course, uh, uh, graphics cards um, to some motherboards and uh, I think some monitors in there. We've got quite a number of actually promos that we'll actually go going through. And uh, hopefully at the end, I'll have just one opportunity to be able to touch on one or two PCDIY builds uh, for the PCDIY Builder Spotlight. All right, uh, very, very cool guys, fantastic. Let's see who we have joining us here. Um, let's see, we've got H2O Computers joining us, man, fantastic to have you here. We've got the one, the only Kevin Daly, one of the best members of our ASUS PC DIY community and definitely a big fan of ASUS. Thanks so much for joining us here, man. Very, very happy to have you here. Uh, let's see, we've also got Connor Johnson, man. Thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, we've got, hey, Stuart, happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much for joining us here on the stream as well, man. Happy to have you here. Michael's joining us, Julian is joining us. How you doing, man? Good to have you here. Uh, H2O Computers, uh, how you doing, man? Fantastic. Erica, as always, fantastic to have you here joining us in the stream as well. So uh, we've got definitely got a full crowd. Uh, we're definitely going to be jumping into it. So let's get ready to uh, pretty much jump straight into it. All right. Hey, Leonard, uh, I won't forget you. All right. Happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much for joining. And also, Michael, uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the stream as well. So let's get ready to go ahead and jump into it. Hey, Mr. Metley, also happy to have you here. Um, let's first go ahead and just get our giveaways out of the way. We've actually got some giveaways that there's just a little bit of time left. So if you guys actually want to get in on them, take advantage of them. I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. So let's go ahead and touch on these first and foremost. So we do actually have quite a number of giveaways to jump into. So... Let's bring this up here. Uh, first one is going to be, uh, let's see here. I think this is going to be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me double check down here. Should be, yeah, uh, should be our Asus and Crucial, uh, our friends essentially at Micron Crucial, have teamed up with us to be able to essentially celebrate Earth Day with a little bit of repurposing. If you've maybe essentially uh, had, you know, an M.2 based SSD, maybe upgraded to a larger capacity, you know, one of the really cool things you can do with it is actually install it into something like our Tough Gaming A1 uh, SSD enclosure. We actually also have an ROG version, the ROG Arion. And as to kind of celebrate just the visibility for that, uh, we are actually doing a giveaway here with our friends over at Crucial where we're actually giving away a Tough Gaming a1 SSD enclosure. This is a really hefty, very, very premium 10 gigabit SSD based enclosure. You can go ahead and slot in a drive and you're good to go. And it's great to be able to just have some high speed performance based storage, uh, which you can use with a desktop or a laptop. Um, but the cool thing, of course, about this promotion is, is that you're pairing it with actually the SSDs as well. So we're going to be giving away one tough gaming SSD enclosure with a four terabyte. That's right. A four terabyte P3 plus M.2 based SSD. You can see that's a pretty nice value, right? You're coming in at a little bit over $313. And then we're also going to be doing a secondary giveaway there with the tough gaming SSD enclosion with a two terabyte P3 plus base SSD. So that's a really nice giveaway. Uh, again, definitely you guys should go ahead and take advantage of it. Uh, I think it's a great option. And let's see, you've got two days left. So if you want to get in on it, make sure to go ahead and do so. So let me go ahead and drop that link in the chat for you guys. Give me one second. And we'll drop that one in there for you. Hey, how you doing, Sneff? Happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much for joining us on the stream. Always good to have one of the best builders and modders in the game from up north over in Canada, Mr. Sneff. So, man, fantastic to have you here. All right, so that covers us for our uh, Asus and Crucial Tough Gaming giveaway. All right, next up, let's see. 
Next up here, we've got over our friends over at Zydax PCs. If you're not aware of Zydax, they are a powered by ASUS partner. So essentially what that just means is that they do work with us in terms of um, actually bringing in a lot of our component products that get integrated into custom builds, which they bring their experience and expertise to be able to essentially put together for you. So if you're looking essentially for all the performance and benefits of a DIY system, but maybe with somebody else taking care of all the specifics for you, uh, then they are actually a great option. So uh, just like many other PBA partners that we've actually covered here on the stream, uh, we actually do work with them and there are a great number of options that you have available in terms of different solutions but one of the cool things that they are doing right now is they are actually giving away a full system so let's go ahead and take a look right here we can see that uh, the spellcraft public beta of course has gone live to kind of celebrate that there's been actually a full system put together here so you can see what do you got in terms of the core specs for this guy this is a pretty beastly system in terms of performance uh, there's seven days left guys um, but pretty much it's a flagship level of performance here so you're talking about an intel core i9 13900k uh, so pretty much flagship series intel uh, 13th gen series cpu uh, then you have an asus tough gaming geforce rtx 4080 graphics card the oc edition so that means it's got a little bit of a factory overclock on it it's cool quiet and extremely fast graphics card you're going to be getting one of our flagship rog maximus series motherboards an rg maximus z790 hero uh, you're then going to have some overclocked memory in there some g skill trident z uh, 6000 MT, also a WD SN850X, very, very fast, 2 terabyte M.2 PCIe MBME SSD, and that's all inside of that Leviathan Infinity Black chassis. So overall, very, very cool, guys. If you want to get in on it, make sure to go ahead and enter. So let me go ahead and drop that one in the chat there. All right, so we've got uh, that one dropped there in there. And if anybody can just go ahead and confirm for me that those um, links are showing up in the chat, that would be appreciated. So thank you guys so much. All right, uh, next up, let's go ahead and go to our next giveaway. So our next giveaway here is we got the Asus Secret Egg Quest giveaway. Uh, this one is actually still going on. There's a little bit of time left here, and this one's pretty fun. It's kind of pretty interesting. So essentially, um, th sped throughout different types of product pages, there's essentially these secret eggs, and you can have to kind of look for them, see if you can actually locate them. You can actually see right here that uh, they're kind of lined in with different actually pricing. So depending on actually what you find, you have the opportunity for essentially winning that different type of hardware. So you can see right here, you've got things like a Tough Gaming RX 7900 XTX. That's a really performant 7900 XTX Radeon based card. You can see we've got peripherals like the Delta S, the RG Azoth, our flagship, really premium. Um, hot swap, uh, gasket mounted, and very, very customizable, of course, uh, compact gaming keyboard. We've got the Harp Ace, our latest generation ultra lightweight, super performing gaming mouse. Um, and then you can even see you've got motherboards, including something like an XX70E Hero and even AMD's latest generation X3D series CPUs. So uh, all you need to do is essentially go through this little kind of uh, breakdown right here. I'll tell you actually where you can navigate and what you want to be looking for essentially in terms of these eggs, right? Uh, and you'll actually see that there's an applet right here that you can go through um, to essentially go through all the specifics if you're interested in that. So um, happy hunting, guys, and uh, take advantage of it. Again, some pretty awesome pricing that is going to be available there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that one in the chat there as well. Hey, Connor, thanks so much. Appreciate you confirming for me that those links are showing up great. So I do appreciate that. All right, so keeping on this, uh, I think really, really uh, extensive level of giveaways that we got here. We've got another one going on from another ASUS PBA partner, and that's going to be from our friends over at CLX, uh, where they're actually giving away one of really their flagship gaming systems here. Uh, and this is going to be with the uh, CLX RAW. So RAW, of course, uh, is, if you guys know about mythology, right, uh, that is going to be, I believe, Sun God. Um, and so we've got a very, very nice high-end system right here that has also been put together. So uh, this has been collaboration between essentially CLX, uh, Asus, Kingston, and Fantex to be able to offer you, again, another full gaming system. A uh, really, really nice option. So we can see right here, this is going to be a Core i7-13700KF. Uh, you've got a 360 AIO that's in there, a Prime Z790-A Wi-Fi. It's the same motherboard right here next to me. Beautiful, great motherboard uh, that you've got. 32 gigabytes of 5600 MT RGB Kingston Fury memory. A uh, one terabyte Kingston Fury PCIe Gen 4 M.2 MBME SSD. Four terabyte uh, HDD in there for some supplemental storage. And Asus Tough Gaming uh, GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. That's all inside of that Fantex Evo Evolve X White, which is fantastic. Um, it also has their custom 
CLX lavender paint, which I think is really cool. It's subtle. It's not super crazy, but it's a nice little kind of just accent that I think gives it a really nice looking feel. Um, and then you've got a thousand watt power supply, a full copy, of course, of Windows 11. And that's actually all shipped inside. Uh, CLX does something really cool. They call it the sarcophagus, but it's like this full crate that comes in really packed in. So uh, the system is shipped to you really in kind of a system configuration that you can feel confident in that like when you unbox it, everything is going to be okay. Um, I'm sure probably some of you maybe in the chat have experienced sometimes these kind of bigger shipments that sometimes it can be actually quite a bit of a process to, to be able to ship them out and make sure that they get to your doors uh, without any potential damage. So pretty cool. Hey, how you doing, man? Thanks so much. I appreciate you joining the stream. Thank you. And hopefully you're getting in on some of these giveaways right here. Yeah, Michael gives us some uh, commentary right there saying lavender cool. Yeah, I really like it. I think it looks really cool. Um, I don't know if I still have the image for this one. Let me see if I have it. I think I had a, a little bit of a close-up image. Let me see if I can bring this up quickly because I almost feel like it merits you just being able to see this image just a little bit more. It looks quite nice. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Ah, yeah, so here we go, guys. So you guys can check right here. You can see it uh, looks really, really nice in here, of course, in terms of their setup. And you can see there that lavender paint. So it's got a really nice kind of like little little bit of, I'd say like a two-tone. So you've got that soft kind of white white there that's in the chassis. You of course have that integrated lighting that that Fantex chassis has. And then you've got the lavender right here that's gonna be on the front and then on the top. And I think that's that's a really nice balance. And uh, of course, you know, you can still play around with the color, the, in the internal RGB lighting screen where you can go into the Armory Crate software and custom configure the lighting. But that is the system. So if you guys wanna get on it, make sure to go ahead and take advantage of that. All right. So that is going to be uh, the uh, another giveaway, and I think we've got one last one. Let me see right here. Yep, uh, we do have even one more giveaway here. So let me go ahead and bring this one up. And if any, uh, did I drop that one in the chat? I guess I did believe I dropped that in the chat, right? Yeah, a show computer saying is I like the color here. Yep. Very, very cool. All right, and so last but not least, uh, if you guys, it hasn't been that long since the actual launch of the um, GeForce RTX 4070 base graphics card. It's actually, I think, one of the best options that are gonna be out there. It's a very compact base card, especially with our dual models. So the great thing is that it will fit in pretty much almost all types of system configurations. So whether you're talking about like a small form factor SFF type build, mini ITX based chassis, micro ITX chassis, or general ATX chassis, even with uh, you know more compact mid-tower chassis, no issues. And the other really cool thing, it's an extremely power efficient part. So you're talking about generally under gaming workloads, you're under 190 watts. So that means if you've got something only maybe like a 650 watt, 550 watt power supply, you're fine. You don't need to upgrade the power supply. And it only uses a single eight pin PCI Express connector. Uh, the dual card and the tough gaming cards actually both use uh, legacy eight pin PCI Express power connectors as opposed to the newer 12 volt high power connector, which will actually be on the RG Strix card. And we'll talk about a little bit of the design differences in a little bit in terms of how that can be maybe uh, beneficial to some of you that are maybe more interested in performance tuning. But if you guys want to, all you need to do is actually check out our live stream uh, that we actually did with my fellow colleague and coworker Jake uh, for the ASUS North American Graphics YouTube channel and uh, essentially get in on the opportunity to win this uh, GeForce RTX 4070 in white. So you've got the opportunity to win one. If you want to check one out, that's pretty sweet. So all you need to do is get in on that giveaway and I'm going to drop that one in the chat. And again, you've only got two days left. And actually, if we look on the entries, 24,000, that's actually not bad at all for a giveaway. 24,000 entries, it's actually pretty small when you consider that we've had entries, um, you know, literally that have reached into the hundreds of thousands. Um, I think maybe even we've had a couple globally that might even, you know, maybe, maybe upwards of maybe like something like a million entries or something like that. Um, but here, 24,000 is actually quite good. So get in on it while well, you guys can. All right. Okay, very cool. So that takes care of all of our giveaways. So I've got all those links in the chat. Again, uh, if anybody's interested, just make sure to go ahead and go through the chat history and you can check those out. Also, of course, if you're part of our ASUS PCDIY group, you can check that out. Um, and it, if anybody lets me know, I think in one of the last streams, uh, people were saying that they felt that the volume was a little bit soft. Let me know if you feel you want me to go ahead and just increase the gain just a little bit. Um, I did go ahead and adjust it previously. So hopefully it's coming through okay. But if you guys can let me know, that would be also appreciated. All right. Let's go ahead and close out here of our giveaways. And we will go into the next item here. All right. So next up, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some partner news, guys. Uh, give me one second here. Adjust this. 
Uh, Michael says, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and turn that up maybe just a little bit more and uh, let me know. I'll, I bumped it twice there, so if you feel that maybe it needs a little bit more, let me know and uh, we'll kind of go from there, okay? All right, uh, give me one second here. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so I think next up here, we've got actually some partner news. So so our friends over at actually EK um, have gone ahead and actually released an update to essentially their uh, water cooling components. And what would they be doing in terms of their water cooling components? Well, they've actually got a new series of blocks right here. So let me go ahead and I'll show you guys here and we'll bring up the product page. Uh, but Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. That was a little bit of a teaser, not yet. Uh, but we essentially have right here, um, essentially an update where they have specific actually white blocks. And so this is pretty cool for those of you, of course, that want be able to pair up, of course, things like we've got our Prime Series motherboards, ROG Strix Series motherboards in white. Uh, we, of course, have a comprehensive lineup in white. We have everything from literally uh, monitors to power supplies to fans to coolers that are all in white, graphics cards that are white. But if you go water cooling, generally your water cooling blocks have not had generally white accenting. Now, it's usually not that much of an issue because most of the time it's clear and you get the RGB accents. And of course you can supplement that with some form of like a white or pastel type of coolant. But it is pretty cool that they actually now have uh, purposeful, essentially a white embellishment that's gonna be present in terms of the actual water block design. So if you're interested, these are going to be compatible with ASUS, ROG Strix and Tough Gaming based graphics cards. And we'll go ahead and drop that in the chat for you guys if you guys are interested in checking these out uh, let me go ahead and bring up the link right here as well so you can see guys right here this is going to be the ek quantum vector uh, they are compatible with the rog strix 4090 uh, currently it does not denote of course uh, other cards models that we have so currently we do also have say for instance like tough gaming 4080 um, so if you guys are interested make sure to go ahead and ping ek and let them know you're excited about actually seeing this type of offering update in terms of a white water block solution what do you guys think i think they are look really nice and definitely would look fantastic in something like maybe like our gt502 chassis it's a great chassis for those of you that are going to be considering maybe a water cooled build or also stewart our friend uh, had an awesome collaboration with leanne lee where he's actually got to his v3000 chassis really really big uh really kind of for maybe the top end of enthusiasts that are looking for really a kind of like a supreme type of water cooling system um, but that could also be another great option for something like this so so pretty pretty cool uh, it looks like Stuart is giving some love to science say finally <laughs> pretty good i like to see that all right pretty cool um the poets is also giving some love and says i like the new white pizzazz the ek is added to the water blocks very very nice all right there we go so we got some thumbs up there i think this is pretty cool all right guys uh so yeah um i will go ahead and drop the link there in the chat as well for these guys so give me one second here and there is the pre-order it is currently available and they're up right now so they are up and running okay so give me one second here and i will drop this in there all right, guys, so that one has been dropped in the chat as well. Okay, very cool. All right, we got our partner news out of the way. All right, guys, so I think next up, next up, that's it. Before we get into the new products, we got to really talk about, I think, oh, what was really exciting. And for those of you, of course, missed out, of course, on the live stream yesterday, I think one of the really big things that we were excited about sharing, of course, is our latest generation Ryujin 3 AIO cooler. So this is our next gen cooler following up essentially on the Ryu 3, which we recently launched a little bit ago, which was actually the first eighth gen Ace Tech based pump solution on the market. A uh, really cool design, has a circular pump, uh, full metal housing with knurling. It feels really premium. I absolutely love it. It has a really distinct kind of design because it doesn't use a traditional screen. It uses our anime matrix uh, technology. So it's got a little bit more of a pixel graphics type display, but we've had a lot of people that you could be in, let's say team circle for your pump housing, or you can be in team kind of square for your pump housing, right? So let me know in the chat, <laughs> which one are you? Do you like your circle or do you like your square? And for those of you that really love the square and that big and bold screen, the Ryogen has really kind of been the benchmark. Uh, it's really the largest screen out there, 3.5 inches. Uh, some of the other companies, somewhere like between maybe like 2.1, 2.3, things like that. So we wanted to definitely to up the ante and kind of take it to the next level. So let's go ahead and take a look at this cool little uh, promo video here. And uh, we'll go ahead and jump into this. And of course, right away, you see really one of the big updates is going to be the magnetic daisy chain based fans that are going to be on this unit. Uh, they're not only, of course, really easy to work with because of the magnetic daisy chain based design, but they are also going to be very performant. And we've even upped the actual 
um, max RPM available on these fans. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look. We're going to recap. We're not going to go in a full deep dive. Of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free and let me know. But we will go ahead and essentially do a quick recap here of all the things that we covered in the Ryujin 3 live stream yesterday. All right, so let's get ready to go ahead and jump into it here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me go ahead and just cover which models we are going to have for the Ryujin 3. So give me a second here, we'll open this up. So it will be pretty straightforward in terms of what we're going to have available. We will have essentially a total of six models that will be coming out. We will be maintaining the very popular Noctua-based editions. So these are for those of you that really just care about performance. You want something that's clean, simple, effective, efficient, and you also really like that large format screen. So maybe you're just looking for simple stat readouts. Maybe you're not looking for GIFs and animations. You just want to be able to see information like CPU temperatures, your fan speeds, different values along those lines. These come included with Noctua IPPC-based fans. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no other AIO manufacturer that currently is pairing their AIO solutions with premium Noctua-based fans. And of course, these IPPC-based fans not only are cool, quiet, and built to a high degree, um, but they also look great, paired perfectly in black. You cannot go wrong with this design. So you're going to have it in 240 and a 360. Moving over into the ARGB based models, we will have, of course, your standard black ARGB based models. Again, 240 and 360. And then last but not least, the exciting update for I think a lot of you is that now we are finally going to be offering the Ryujin 360 and 240 in white, not just in black. So previously we did have white for our ROG Strix LC series cooler. So like the one you see right here next to me, that's in our LC2 series, where we have that in a 240, 280, and a 360. We also of course released the Ryu in white and in black in 240 and 360. And now we're doing it for the Ryu Jin, where you can get it in white and you can get it in black. All right, those are gonna be all of the models that we're gonna have for the Ryu Jin. It looks like we got a quick question right here that says, why is there no 420 this time? So 420 is actually under, I'd say, evaluation, not specifically for the Ryu Jin. And part of the reason I think that we haven't necessarily wanted to push that is 420 really specifically has much more constraints in terms of mechanical interoperability and compatibility. What that essentially just means is there's not that many chassis that can readily support it. Um, take, for instance, we do have like our latest generation of Hyperion, which could support this. But overall, when we take a look at the vast majority of chassis on the market, they're not gonna support a 420 millimeter based radiator. Um, and also generally when you usually shift into that segmentation of the market, you're starting to see a lot more users probably start to consider maybe some form of custom uh, water cools based configurations. Um, but that being said, we are evaluating it. So to always keep, keep tuned, you know, and if we have an announcement, we'll definitely make one. But as of right now, we don't have any immediate plans for a 420 based solution, okay? Um, so, Let's go ahead and keep going through on, essentially let's talk about some of these new design points here and then we'll take of course some closer looks at some of the images and things along those lines, right? Okay, so let's go here and take a look at what's essentially new with the Ryogen 3, right? So it's pretty straightforward. First, we've got that Ace Gen Ace of Tech base pump. Now that comes along with a couple of other things where you have things like thicker tubing, better flow rate, um, you have a three phase motor. So essentially from a performance perspective, this does allow for even just overall better performance, okay? And of course you still can go ahead and control this. So if you wanna be able to control your pump um, and essentially it's operating parameters, that is all controllable within the Armor Crate software suite. The new larger cold plate, the new larger cold plate is gonna be a big benefit fit here and that's going to give you up to essentially 30% larger contact. It's kind of optimally designed to work with the latest generation base CPUs, right? So the latest generation Intel 12th gen, 13th gen series CPUs, the latest Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. You have a thicker radiator. So this is the same radiator size that we introduced for the Ryu. So we went up from 27 millimeters to 30 millimeters. The new fans, the fans themselves, um, they're similar in terms of the design where they have a ring barrier. So they're already static pressure optimized. They were actually quite good compared to many RGB fans on the market, which usually sacrifice quite a bit more airflow and quite a bit more static pressure compared to a traditional fan, especially something like the Noctua IPPC based fans. We really spent a lot of time to actually give very good performance for the included ROG fans. But here we actually pump them up and we even give you a little bit of higher max RPM, so 2200 RPM. Although really the sweet spot for most users is gonna to tend to usually be between about 400 to about 1400 RPM. Uh, we then have implemented a magnetic daisy chain based design that will go ahead and power 
essentially the ARGB lighting and the fan controls, and that will all come through one signal. Uh, the display still maintains 3.5 inches, but we move it up to 60 frames a second support, and we also doubled the onboard memory. So that gives us essentially just faster, clearer, and smoother animations and GIFs that you can run on the screen. We've improved the VRM Assist fan, where it's actually larger, and it's now a, a ring barrier-based design. It's our axial tech based type of design, and that even just gives you better performance for the actual kind of supplemental VRM airflow that that actually VRM Assist fan provides. Um, the top aluminum bezel has gone ahead and been enhanced. It gives it a little bit more of a premium feel to it, and it's also available in white. So quite a number of nice points that are all on these upgrades. So you can actually really see, I think, from a uh, very high level, right, to even smaller details, there's a lot of improvements that are present on here. And so to recap some of these essentially upgrades, just from a kind of more visual perspective, again, you can see right here that eighth gen uh, pump, right, uh, where we of course also have the larger axial take embedded VRM assist fan, that cold plate, which is larger, and even a subtle thing you guys might not know, the retention kit right here has also been enhanced and improved in his metal. Um, so that just, I think, even gives you a better experience as well. So uh, that is subtle, but it is also gonna be a difference, okay? You can see that really large based uh, cold plate that you have right there for the uh, Ryogen 3. Uh, you can see that large thick radiator, right? 30 millimeters versus the 27 millimeters. Of course, comparatively, you can get much, much larger radiators uh, for custom water cooling configurations, but this is an upgrade compared to the Ryogen 2. Uh, here, that really impressive new ROG magnetic daisy chain based design. And right there, you can see your actual little pins there that allow for the actual magnetic connection. Okay. And here you can see the actual all kind of connected together seamlessly, really nice. And then you'll see your connector cable, which comes included inside the box. And for your reference, if you're wondering, you can connect the cable either on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. So depending on your orientation and your cable routing, you can run it on either side to make it very clean and very easy. All right. That big 3.5 inch display, again, with twice the onboard memory, 60 frames a second, uh, which has been updated as well. Okay. And then you can see uh, just kind of how it looks like that. Also keep in mind here, we're going to talk about what's the same. Um, and there was a lot of things that were really good on the Ryogen that there was no reason to change. And we're going to talk about those things. And one of those is going to be the inclusion of the VRM Assist fan. So let's go ahead and quickly recap here, essentially, what is the same on uh, the Ryogen 3. So give me a second to bring this up. And then I will uh, pop in to make sure that uh, taking a look at the questions here, if somebody's got any quick questions right here. So recapping what's the same versus what's different is 3.5 inch display is already what we had, but we upgraded it. So keep in mind, it's going to look the same in terms of the dimensions, but it's actually going to perform better. The magnetic pup housing. Uh, this, I think, is actually one of my favorite things about the Ryujin. If anybody's in the chat has actually had a Ryujin, I think they also really appreciate the magnetic pump housing because literally you can just lift the pump housing off, makes it easier to kind of just get everything situated. If you also want to clean the VRM assist fan, it's quite a bit more just practical and easy. And the other cool thing about the magnetic pump housing is that you can actually remove it and you can adjust the orientation. So if you want to go kind of like a vertical setup versus a horizontal setup, it's cool. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, a really kind of still pretty unique element for the Ryogen is the number of actually on-screen stats. So we actually have a, up to a quad essentially stat display a level of functionality. So you can have like your CPU, your uh, temperature, your clock speeds and voltages all actually at the same time. So there's a lot of flexibility. You also get an included one year license with 8064 and we support 8064 UI templates. So if you want to customize your own 8064 stat display, you can do that as well. The VRM cooling, of course, has been maintained from generation to generation, but it's just been improved. Bottom mounting tubing um, so that it doesn't impact your essentially your DRAM, which if you keep the kind of the, the cable on the uh, to the adjoining side, right, to the right-hand side, it can sometimes bump against your DRAM. Six-year warranty, which is the same that we had for the prior and we have also for the Ryu, Ryu 3. And then uh, we also have the Mach 2 models, so 240 millimeter, 360 millimeter, and then a 400 millimeter cable length, okay? So that gets you covered there in terms of that. Uh, the height increase, Griffin X. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the height increase. If you maybe want to post, uh, tag me in the PCDIY group, or if you want to email me PCDIY at ASUS.com, you can go ahead and do that just uh, so I can go ahead and try to clarify and respond to the question that you're asking, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so now somebody's asking is give us a release date. The release date is we are going to be tar targeting a late May timeframe. Now there may be a little bit of differentiation between maybe like the black, 
um, and like the white model. So it could be maybe that we roll over from May into June in terms of kind of the rolling kind of release launch. They might not all be exactly available at the same time, um, but we are going to be expecting essentially kind of a late Q2 uh, maybe going into a Q3 timeframe, right? Uh, but I think overall our target is to essentially have release availability for the very end of May. So of course, if you guys are watching the PCDIY live streams uh, weekly here, or you're of course part of our PCDIY group, you're gonna make sure to be able to see those featured announcement posts to let you know when the Ryogen 3 is going to be made available, okay? Um, so Michael says, interesting, he says, make it Bluetooth instead of USB for control. And that wouldn't be very practical, I think, in terms of just consistency and reliability at ensuring that it works as smooth as possible. But I do actually want to show you guys a little bit of um, a difference in terms of actually how the Ryogen works. So give me one second here, because I want to bring up uh, the manual and actually show you guys a little bit of the difference in terms of how the Ryogen is going to work. Okay, so... Let me bring this up here and we'll go in and take a look at this. Okay. And for anybody wondering against you about the magnetic pump housing, I have my sample off there to the half, uh, but I don't want to just uh, bre break it out yet. But you can actually see what I mean by the pump housing where essentially you can just lift it up and then you have access to it. It's very, very simple uh, in terms of being able to pull it off and then put it back on. So it's not a very complicated process. Now with the prior Ryujin, one of the things that we actually offered was in a controller box. So essentially the controller box uh, is actually where you made all the connections to for the fans and for the ARGB. For this model, it will work differently because it has the actual ARGB fans. So if we actually look in terms of what you're gonna actually be connecting to your motherboard, um, you'll have one USB cable that will just plug into a standard USB 2 header. So that's pretty much par for the course, very simple, uh, straightforward. And then you see that there's actually one other cable and this will actually be for the AIO pump header and that you would wanna plug in pretty much almost all of our motherboards starting from something like a Z 790 like dash P or similarly like on the AMD side for like a, an equivalent kind of entry level model um, will have an AIO pump header and you just plug into that. So those are going to be the two specific headers that you're going to need. And then if you're uh, working with, let's say the ARGB model, the ARGB model is going to be very straightforward. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up the document here so you guys can kind of see as for reference um, what you're going to have there. So give me one second here. So if we take a look actually what's included uh, you'll see you get the cooler, right? You get the fans, the back plate, the bracket adapters, you get the fan cable right here. And this actual little connector is essentially what is going to connect either to the left or to the right hand side, right? And then you have that flexibility that you can go ahead and run that to, to the ARGB header and the fan header on the motherboard, right? And so the cool thing about that is that you don't have to have kind of that supplemental uh, header. If you want to use an extension cable, you can go ahead and use an extension cable. These are non-proprietary, right? So there's nothing special in terms of that you have to go to some specialized controller box and you can still actually use the UEFI BIOS if you want to use that for fan control. You're not limited to controlling the fans just within the operating system. So you do have the flexibility. You can use essentially Armory Crate uh, to do all your actually RGB and fan management, or you can also do it inside the UEFI BIOS. Um, also a subtle little thing, but I like actually screws that do have the washers integrated within them. Um, it just makes it a little bit of a simpler, easier experience to make sure that you're distributing pressure across the corner when you're mounting the actual fans. Um, so I think that's a nice kind of subtle touch. And one other thing uh, that you uh, may not know, uh, but that we did do actually in terms of the design of these fans is we optimally size the fans to align kind of perfectly with the radiator. So um, sometimes in some fans, you'll actually find that they're misaligned. And so they're a little bit off and they kind of have to repositioned or they'll be a little bit kind of at an angle. But here we kind of align them so that they perfectly rest within the radiator and you don't have to worry about kind of damaging the radiator in relation to also the screw length as well. Okay. Um, and if we scroll down here, Another little item that's kind of cool that some users that had the Ryu Jin, excuse me, the Ryu may have noticed is that these units also come included with actually a little protective a guard for the radiator. So I don't know if anybody in the chat essentially can notice, but one of the kind of pain points that sometimes you may have had is that when you install your radiator, um, maybe you have bent one of the fins or damaged one of the fins. Sometimes, you know, just people drop a screwdriver, right? Maybe they, you know, they accidentally they bump it, they set it down and then all of a sudden it gets nicked and then you're spending time to try to straighten everything out. But you do actually have these cool little inserts. You can remove the insert. There's actually a very clear label on it that says, hey, remove me please, because of course <laughs> the, the, uh, the inserts will restrict essentially the functionality and performance for the radio. So it is critical to remove them, but they do help to kind of just safeguard and make sure that it's working well, okay? Um, and you can see right there, it's magnetic, right? They will just come together and you're good to go. 
and uh, right here you can see just magnetic it will uh, essentially make that attachment to either that left or the right hand side and you'll be good to go so a very very simple and very clean process okay All right, so let me go ahead and uh, bring up here. We'll take a little bit look at the closer photos, and then I'm going to go ahead and double check some questions right here. But I do want to go ahead and just quickly um, show essentially just one more time here for, for people so they can actually see. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video one more time, just kind of just for reference, so we can actually see it kind of come together again and how it looks. All right. So uh, there you can see how it looks. It does have a little bit of a subtle design difference in terms of that actual uh, pump housing compared to the Ryujin 2. It has a little bit, I'd say, more of a dual tone kind of element to it. So a little bit maybe more monochrome than a little bit more black, right? You do also get that really nice um, actually cable wrap that does come included. So you will get that cable wrap included inside the box. So I allow you to go ahead and manage your cables, okay? And now as we go ahead and take a closer look, you can see, of course, that nice ring barrier effect, uh, of course, well, not effect, but you can actually see the ring barrier design, which also creates a nice kind of cool little um, kind of periphery kind of circular element when you do have the RGB lighting that is going to be present on the Ryujin. But overall, it's a great looking design, right? Very performant and is gonna be very complimentary again for anybody that's gonna be going for a higher end build. This is gonna be, of course, a premium AIO based solution. So really gonna be targeted for those that are gonna be looking for a high end CPU pairing. So, you know, you've got a 12900, you've got, um, a similarly like high-end 7000 Ryzen series, a CPU, right? Um, now keep in mind that from a gaming perspective, most CPUs actually can comfortably be handled with a 240 millimeter AIO. So it's not critical that you have to go to a 360, uh, but some users just, they like to have that extra margin um, or they want to kind of have that delta of knowing that, hey, maybe I want a little bit more overclocking headroom, a little bit lower temperatures. Um, but the performance delta isn't necessarily gonna be massive between like a 240 and a 360. So that is all something to kind of keep in mind of. Right. And here you can, of course, see that magnetic magnetic based design. Very, very simple. They just clip together and you're going to be good to go. So very, very simple in terms of how you can work with it. OK. So that gives you kind of a quick perspective right there. Michael gives us some feedback there is that nice detail in terms of the actual protective guard for the radiators. Um, I would definitely agree. So let's go ahead and just quickly take a look at um, just like a quick run through of the images and then I'm going to move over to the rest of the new items guys. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll double check for any just kind of quick questions here before we go to the next item. Again, I don't want to spend too much time because we did have a full live stream yesterday that covered uh, the Ryujin in detail. Okay. So here we can see again, larger, uh, larger cold plate those 400 millimeter tubing, right? 3.5 inch display, now 60 frames a second, twice the onboard memory. Of course, all the venting that's present right there uh, for the integrated VRM assist fan. This is the Noctua based edition, as you can see, because of course it's pretty much black on black on black, right? Uh, 30 millimeter for the radiator as opposed to 27 millimeters for the radiator. And you can of course see a 240. So again, all the options will either have a 240 or a 360 base variant. And there you can see how it's mounted on there. And you have that larger axial tech static pressure ring barrier optimized kind of design uh, for the downward firing airflow to be able, that's able to essentially help to improve some operating temps. So that's the Noctua version. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the ARGB version. ARGB version. These are, of course, the ROG fans. And uh, for anybody asking, no, the fans will not be sold separately. They are exclusive and bundled just for the Ryu Jin. Uh, so they are not optioned as independent base fans. You can only get them included with the Ryu Jin. Okay, so that's going to give us the uh, black. And now let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the white. ahead and bring up this one right here all right and now let's go ahead and take a look at the white so here you guys can see right here it's all the same there's no difference between the black and the white it's just it's white there you guys go all right that is our first look preview at the Ryogen 3 uh, let's go ahead and quickly just see if there's any quick questions I want to go ahead and uh, kind of jump into
Uh, yeah, Chuck, thanks for that feedback. We are aware. We are looking at still kind of designing and developing independent standalone fans. They're two different things. Commonly, you don't see actually really most AIOs kind of have the same fans that get bundled with the AIO versus kind of what's sold independently. There have been a couple examples of this, but overall, as kind of general rule, that's usually not the case. It's kind of similar to chassis. You don't usually get like very high-end independent fans in a chassis. Um, included right with there there's going to usually be a difference between the way a product is designed as a standalone independent product as opposed to kind of like an inbox based accessory this i think bucks the trend a little bit in terms of it's a very high performing based fan with a cool level of functionality and feature set hence it is also the ryujin so it's a very premium based product so hence the kind of inclusion within that space but we are actually evaluating our future and forthcoming ROG, uh, ARGB, essentially standalone fan. Because right now we do have our Strix XF120 fan. It's a great maglev, high-performing, just pure black fan. I really love them for just simple, high-performance based builds, right? Where I care about airflow, longevity, and performance, and good tone in terms of the uh, fan profile from noise. We also have the Tough Gaming fans, which are a really great balance in terms of their airflow, static pressure, their LED array design, and very good bearing, especially compared to other companies where there's a lot of other RGB fans and the bearing quality, it's not even close. They might be using still like a basic hydraulic bearing, so like rated for like 80k and you know we're using a much much better bearing that's 250k rating so uh, we do have those are kind of standalone options and we will have our white tough gaming fans available in um, may late late may is kind of our our, our resident time frame asus itx clearance for the ryujin 3 pump there shouldn't be any issues especially because we moved that down so you can pretty much already kind of benchmark the current ryu and the ryujin um, and kind of go like if you see it working there within the itx based motherboard it will essentially be compatible with the ryujin 3. Uh, some feedback right there is the magnet fans are so awesome yeah i would definitely agree uh, we got Mr. Matt Lee, one of the uh, great builder guys. If you guys are not checking out, of course, his socials, make sure and do that. He takes a look at a lot of our great stuff uh, with, in coordination with our friends over there in Asus UK. He says he looks forward to putting the Ryujin 3 in a tempered glass AP201 blackout build. Ooh, I'm liking that, right? That sounds pretty sweet. That sounds pretty sweet. Okay. Um, Hey, Jason, it's a little bit of a long comment right there, so I don't know if I could read through that whole thing right there. Um, different uh, builder forgot to take. Yeah, I think if what I'm saying is that you ran into some type of Windows activation issue, this is actually sometimes pretty common. People will kind of assume that they can just swap motherboards or make changes and they run into issues with Windows activation, but it's quite common. And it can actually also happen with games and different applications where they are essentially activated to the MAC address that's on your motherboard. And if you ever actually change your motherboard, um, you can essentially still have Windows quote unquote work, but then you can have to actually reactivate Windows. You can actually also run into programs that they assign and bind essentially the account to that. And if you don't relinquish it prior to it, they can actually count that activation or that seat against you. And you may then have to go online and remove that and then reactivate it for your new system. So that is somewhat common in terms of actually DRM, so digital rights management. So you always want to be mindful of essentially when you're making those changes. Sometimes it can be difficult because, of course, the replacement can become unexpected, right? You're not necessarily always pre prepared in that respect, right? Uh, let me just see right here if there was any other quick questions. Uh, global release date or regional? So uh, the May date that I told you, um, you should probably somewhat align, I think, with a, with a global. Some regions actually may even see it a little bit earlier than us. In the United States, there's always, of course, logistics and, of course, the shipping variables that account for. And also keep in mind that every region is different in terms of the product assortment that they would carry. So it could be a possibility maybe in your region they may not carry the Ryu Jin. Um, we're pretty lucky in North America because we have such a diverse and strong PC DIY community that almost all products that get kind of uh, announced by ASUS are carried by ASUS um, in North America, but there can be sometimes regional differences. Even sometimes in Canada, not every single product is always even made available in Canada, for instance. And I know our Canadian followers are like, we want everything that also the U.S. gets. And it can be sometimes a tricky balance to try to make that work as much as possible. So I'd recommend if you're in a different region, wherever that might be, and you maybe ASUS Europe, you know, ASUS Japan, um, you know, Australia, New Zealand, um, you know, wherever it might be, reach out to ASUS on, uh, in your region. You can use the contact us on the website uh, for ASUS in your region and ask them essentially if they're going to be carrying the Ryujin 3 and when they plan to actually have it available. Okay. All right, guys. 
I'm gonna go ahead and move this on, right? Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on there. Again, if you guys have more questions, feel free to go ahead and tag me in the ASUS PC DIY group or check out our featured announcement post where I've gone ahead and covered a lot of details that are in there or you can check out our live stream from yesterday. All right, very, very cool guys. So that is gonna be the Ryujin 3. All right, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some new motherboards that we've got in terms of the lineup. We're gonna go through pretty quickly on these guys. Um, just some minor kind of, I think, updates that we have here in terms of some new motherboards. So the first one is going to be, let's go ahead and bring this one up. Uh, it's gonna be, yeah, it's right here. All right, so yeah, this is gonna be, I think, yep, uh, B760 Plus, all right. And so with the B760 Plus, this is gonna be an update that we're gonna have in terms of uh, socket 1700. So B760 is gonna be a solid chipset. It's great, I think, for general kind of users that are looking for general productivity, maybe a kind of like a NAS sandbox, maybe coding, maybe entry-level gaming is definitely an option, um, you know, general kind of content creation. You don't have necessarily a focus at kind of wanting to have the highest level specifications or overclocking support for the CPU. You can, of course, if you want to be able to run um, overclocked base memory configurations, and you have to count relative to you know warranty, heat, power, the different factors that come, acom, uh, come across with overclocking. B760 does allow for overclocking the memory, so that is gonna be an option that you do have available to you on this platform. Um, but it's a nice solid set of foundational specs here. So you are essentially going to have, of course, a DDR5 specification. We already did have a DDR4 base model, but DDR4 uh, and DDR5 pricing, it's definitely come down to be quite a bit more competitive, and it does carry the benefit of, especially when you talk about multi-threaded performance, the bandwidth uh, that DDR5 offers is quite a bit of a bump up in terms of performance for multi-threaded applications. Um, plus you can also get easily much higher densities where you can easily run 32, 64, 48 gigabytes, uh, right, in DDR5. And now actually with the latest generation non-binary memory kits, you could be literally going 192 gigabytes. So if you had kind of an interesting maybe situation where you're maybe a professional user and you have very, very high memory densities, you wouldn't be able to do this on DDR4, but you could do this even on a motherboard like this in DDR5, right? Uh, you have USB-C connectivity, both legacy and the newer USB-C uh, internal header uh, that are going to be present on here. In terms of your Wi-Fi, uh, this board does not have Wi-Fi, but it does have a vertical, essentially, CNVI Wi-Fi slot. So you can essentially just add in your Wi-Fi module. You do have multiple M.2 uh, M SSD slots, so 1, 2, and 3. So you can support up to 3. You have PCI Gen 5 support, and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six rear USB ports, including actually a 20 gigabit bits port uh, and then uh, 10 gigabits I think right here and 5 gigabits um, so it's actually quite robust it's a solid base option $165 if you're just looking for again a I think a turnkey solution to just be able to run something I, I would recommend something probably like a 12 100 12 400 um, series or even something like a 12 600 similarly 13th gen could be 13 100 13 400 13 600 you use that with this a nice basic tower heat sink you can have a very solid, stable, quiet system, and you can still even do things like RGB. You've got three ARGB headers on this motherboard, so that's a good, solid kind of baseline if you're looking for, um, I think, like, again, a white-themed base motherboard. I'm just looking for kind of a basic foundation to be able to get you up and running. Um, let me go ahead and drop the links in the chat here for this guy, so give me one second. I'll drop the link there, and in case um, I missed it for that one, uh, that also does support 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So I think it's a solid foundation there as well. Um, Mike Russo, um, Mike's actually done a couple, I think, builds in the past with actually B-series chipset. And I think a lot of people that sometimes haven't looked at the B-series chipsets recently, they think of them as kind of very basic. But in the last few generations, the B-series, both Intel and AMD, have really jumped up in terms of really offering, I think, a very solid value proposition with a good set of specifications. You know, if you don't have needs for like, 10 gigabit or Thunderbolt, right? Or, you know, very, very specialized uh, design features or functions like, you know, in our, our you know, Q, uh, Q release uh, design or even more advanced aesthetic elements on the motherboard, the B series options can be a really nice solid foundation with that, right? Okay, so that is gonna be for the B760 uh, Plus. All right, next up here, we were gonna have another motherboard. And this one, we're just pivoting to kind of be a similar based option, but we're gonna pivot down to a micro ATX base board. And this one will be with the B760M. M is always easier for you guys to know, again, that we're referring to essentially a micro, T micro ATX based motherboard as opposed to an ATX based motherboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. And similar to the previous model, this is also a DDR5 uh, update. So we did have a DDR4. Hence, if it was DDR4, it would actually say DDR4, but because it doesn't say DDR4, it is a DDR5 base option. Again, 
almost everything I'm going to tell you is going to be very similar to the plus model that we just talked about. Great foundation here for, I think, just like a uh, 100, 400, or 600 series right uh, processor, right? So like I said, 13100, 13400, or 13600. Uh, you are going to have um, two M.2, so not a total of three, but two M.2 on here. Right, you still get your internal USB-C and your uh, prior legacy USB-3 that's going to be here. Updated specification support for expansion in terms of your slots, your DRAM, all those kind of basic items. Um, I, I think it's also a nice, just basic, clean-looking board. Again, good foundation. I would love to pair this up with something like our AP201. Our a 201 is not an expensive micro-ATX chassis, but it's got a lot of room. You can fit all kinds of graphics cards in there, all kinds of coolers. It's easy to cable manage. It's not expensive, and it has great airflow, and it looks really, really nice. So I'm a big fan of it. Um, some nice subtle details too that you might not even realize that even though we're talking about a more entry motherboard, we have tried to do some sensible layout things. Some people only look at the kind of the pure spec, but sometimes you want to look at the usability elements. Some usability elements that are important is take a look at this. So you can see right here, we have put this M.2 SSD uh, slot that's going to be above the by 16 and it also has a heatsink. But if you put the graphics card here, it means you're not immediately blocking access to that M.2 SSD. So you can still have access to it. And then you can also see down here that other M.2 SSD slot. If you're using something essentially like our dual 4070, which would be a nice little kind of budget pairing right here if you have a lower budget, right? Um, that's a nice pairing. It's not going to limit access to this another M.2 SSD slot here, where sometimes if it was immediately down here, you're going to have to remove the graphics card just to be able to get access to the M.2 base SSD, right? So, you know, basic things like that, but it is, I think, a solid foundation that you've got here, again, for a another motherboard coming in at $155. So that is going to be our B760M. And this one also does have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet that's also going to be on this motherboard as well. So you also get that update there. HO Computer says, uh, it's a good value board. Yeah, I think again, for people that are just looking for, like I said, a simple either entry into a gaming system, maybe a general productivity box, maybe you're looking for something like a SAN or a NAS box, right? Um, Procmox, VMware kind of situation. This could be a perfect option to be able to kind of put together something like that. Small, compact, power efficient, uh, but still nice on tap in terms of the performance where you can scale the different CPUs, have a lot of memory density support. So things along those lines, right? Um, no uh, option for added Wi-Fi. Yeah, so that model will not be sold with like a Wi-Fi variant. So take for instance like here, like the Z790-A Prime board, which is a higher end model already comes with Wi-Fi built on it. But that plus model that we did talk about, it does have a uh, header on it. So again, I will show that to you again really quickly here. Let me go ahead and bring up the image. So it doesn't have Wi-Fi natively, but if you look right here, You'll see it says M.2 Wi-Fi. So that is a slot. So essentially you could put in the actual Wi-Fi card in there to be able to add Wi-Fi to the motherboard. And that is independent than if you were going to be using essentially either one, two, or three of those M.2. So you still have your three M.2 SSD slots. And that slot essentially is specific to an M.2 Wi-Fi module. Okay. Okay, so that is going to be uh, for... Okay, so it looks like we had just a little bit of... Uh, Maybe a dropout right there. If everybody can let me know if the stream's actually still holding through okay. If you can just confirm for me in the comments, that would be fantastic. I just want to make sure that um, everything is still coming through okay, guys. If you can just confirm that for me, that would be appreciated. Okay, and we'll get ready to go into our next product right here. All right. Okay. Uh, it sounds like it's okay. Chris, thanks for confirming. I think it's good now, right? Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Matley. I appreciate it. Okay, very, very good. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and keep moving that along. So um, next right here, let's go and take a look at what we're going to cover. Yeah, we'll give right here. Uh, let's go into our Zen Wi-Fi XT9 as we'll use that as a quick update. <laughs> 
So this is going to fall again under our routers and networking product, right? Um, also technically a mesh networking product, but this will be the Zen Wi-Fi XT9. So we've actually had a very popular model with the Zen Wi-Fi XT8. So here we're going to be jumping into the Zen Wi-Fi XT9. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. All right, so here we can see with the Zen Wi-Fi, uh, if you're not familiar, like we have our traditional routing product and traditional routers, they're generally actually the best performing products. They have the fastest chipsets, the most robust actually connections that are gonna be available to them. And all of our traditional routers can be mesh routers because they are considered what's called an extendable router. You can essentially add multiple routers. You can actually add two, three, four, five through AI mesh. So you can actually create your own mesh configuration. But there are some people that prefer to maybe just have the simplicity of buying a mesh unit combined together. And also maybe from an aesthetic perspective, they want something a little bit more refined, a little bit more compact, and they don't want kind of visible antennas. And that's where the Zen Wi-Fi series come in, where we have them in both black, we have them in white, we have them in a wide range of configurations from everything from dual band to band to even quad band to Wi-Fi 6E to even uh, eventually in the future Wi-Fi 7. So we really cover the gamut across the board regardless of what you're going to be doing. So you can see right here coming in at only $240, very reasonable in terms of its price point. You can see you've got white and black, nice clean compact base design with the antennas all internally built into them. You still do have wired connectivity that's going to be available to you here with your WAN and then three LAN. Um, now the WAN is going to be a multi gigabit. That means that it will support 2.5 gigabit ISP connections. So if you're going to be upgrading to a bit of faster ISP service, whether it's going to be from fiber um, or whoever your, you know, your provider might be, this can support essentially faster than one gigabit ISP based service. You do also have USB there. So if you maybe want to have your local kind of your own local um, NAS type of drive setup. So connecting something like an external drive to that USB port, you could essentially have a network based USB drive that's easily available. That's kind of powered through the router, which is pretty cool. And then those three wired connections, they can actually work in a lot of different ways. Some people go is like, what's the point of having that there? And you might maybe have what's called like a media bridge kind of configuration. So an example is maybe one of these units is going to be in the living room. Right, and then maybe the other unit is going to be like in the office where maybe that uh, internet connection is coming into the house. But in the living room, maybe you have like the TV, the console, and maybe like another device, right? That are that could benefit from actually having a hard wire connection. So instead of utilizing wireless bandwidth, you could actually run them from the wire, and that's actually what's referred to as a media bridge. So you can actually use them in that way. So there's some actually cool elements. The other benefit too of having that wired connection is we do support what's called a wired backhaul. It means we can. Actually use a wired cable to talk to the two routers together to make a NESH network. Now this unit, you can see has quite a um performant coverage in terms of what you can go with, right? So you can actually see, um, you know, whether you're talking about 2,800 square foot, 3,500 square foot, very large environments, you're going to be able to actually cover this. You're going to be able to cover extensive number of uh, devices that are connected to this. This is going to be a very high-end based router in terms of specifications because this is a tri-band based model. So that means you got 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and a secondary 5 gigahertz channel. That secondary 5 gigahertz channel is really important for Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E based devices to be able to kind of perform to their fastest level. Um, the other important thing you want to keep in mind with a mesh router is one of these bands is always lost when you have your SNG mesh network because you use one of those bands to talk to the routers together. That is essentially what is called a backhaul connection. So a tri-band router is more favorable in terms of its performance than a dual band router because in a dual band router, you're only left with one band left. That one band is generally very stable, has very good speed and very good throughput, but that's actually why traditional routers tend to perform actually even better because they are not sacrificing one of the bands to try to talk to one of the other routers, but they may not office broad coverage in the same way that a mesh router could because those mesh routers are essentially working together to try to provide maybe more coverage, but maybe at the expense of some performance. Um, so being able to have flexibility in terms of that backhaul though, gives you kind of the best of both worlds, right? Um, and the more bands that you have, even if you lose a band, you're still able to then maintain two bands, right, for your devices. That 2.4, which is gonna give you the best range, very good performance, and then that five, which will generally give you less range, but higher speeds, right? Very performant processor, 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, you know, without getting too technical, the really big benefit of a faster chipset in a router is just that you get just more performance on tap for the router to do a lot of things. Whether that's going to be running like a VPN service directly on the router, uh, being able to maintain better performance with a high number of devices that are actually running. And there's a lot of really great features that we have in terms of monitoring and management that are built into our what's called ASUS WRT firmware that you'll have available to you. And you can access those through the web interface 
or you can access them through the Asus router app. 512 megabytes of RAM that is also going to be on this model as well. So that is going to be the Zen Wi-Fi X-T9. Again, coming 240 bucks, very reasonable price point if you're looking to be able to upgrade to some Wi-Fi 6. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and... I think we had, um, Michael's knowing, uh, is that for one or two units? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Yes. So Michael, it depends on the configuration. So the one unit by itself, right, of course, is going to be lower in price. And then if you go with the dual pack, there is actually a promo right now. So the dual pack configuration, um, instead of 450 right now comes in at 399. So you can save $50 right now, actually on the XT9, if you get the combo pack. Um, let me check if that's for both the black and the white. Yep, that's for both the black and the white. So when you actually go and you can click the tab, you can actually see right here that you've got the single and you've got the double. And you can see that right there for the double, you have a $50 promotion available to you right now for both units. Okay, so that is going to be the XT9. And I think I did share that link there, guys, in the chat. So I think we're good there. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about some graphics cards, guys. What do you say? Let's talk about some graphics cards. All right, let's go and uh, we're going to quickly recap on the duel. And I won't need to cut ton of touch too much on the duel because we already covered it. We have a full live stream. You guys can check it out. And of course, you can win this same graphics card by watching that live stream. So why don't you go ahead and check out that live stream? But to quickly recap right here, let, uh, let's take a look at essentially kind of like the models that we have available in terms of our 4070s. So we do have our dual, which is currently right now available. This one's in black. I absolutely love this design. It's really clean. It's really compact. It's 2.55 slots. It has actually uh, even higher uh, VRM design than what you have on the standard FE based model. It has a very clean and compact kind of aesthetic. There's no RGB lighting. It works perfectly with pretty much just any type of build with that clean, nice black theme. Um, but it is a very compact card, 200 and I think 267 millimeters, 2.55 slot, cool, quiet. It does have a dual V BIOS and it has a single eight pin PCI Express power connector, which is great because you can go ahead and pair this up with pretty much any current pre-existing PSU. You don't have to worry about any 12 volt high power adapter cables or anything along those lines. You are going to be set. We then also have now the white model. So this is the one that's going to be launching and we will essentially have this one in two variants. So we will actually have the OC model, which is going to be essentially the same exact model, just slightly factory overclocked. And then we will have the standard model, which will essentially be $10 cheaper. So you can essentially get six for 610 or 600, just depends on which one you want. They're both white. Um, exactly the same in terms of what we just talked about the white model, excuse me, the black model, but it's just going to be white. And you also both have that really nice premium uh, backplate and the backplate even has thermal pads which actually just give you a little bit of kind of residual kind of bump there in terms of some thermal dissipation element right there okay this is going to be the new guy that we're going to be talking about here the rog strix and i'm going to go a little bit more into this one in a little bit and then of course rounding it out we also do have the tough gaming 4070 so we're essentially going to have four 4070 cards we'll have two dual cards we'll have the white and the black we'll have the tough gaming and then we'll have the rog strix okay so let's go ahead and talk a bit more about this rog strix and see kind of like well what do we have in terms of the differences right so the first thing i want to go ahead and talk about is going to be well what's the difference between the dual and the tough gaming okay so with the tough gaming remember right here with the dual this is already cool quiet and very performant it's essentially going to actually be quieter and same temperature if not even a little bit cooler than the fe card so if you see essentially benchmarks for the fe card this is already going to be equivalent to the fe card even a little bit actually better in terms of its actual temperatures and its acoustics um, but it carries like i said that benefit of the 8 pin pci express legacy connector really nice clean and compact based design now the tough gaming model is going to be a little bit more expensive so what do you get with it you're going to get rgb lighting so you get one rgb lighting zone here another rgb lighting zone there you're going to get a little bit higher uh program boost clock that's going to be on there. It's going to, of course, be a larger, more performant thermal solution. So that allows it to be absolutely just super impressive in terms of how cool and quiet it is. Um, that could be beneficial if maybe you have a chassis with less airflow, maybe you're in a more 
kind of hot ambient environment. That could be an aspect. You also have a material difference composition. This is going to be plastic and this is metal. So, um, you know, this is still quite nice, but this definitely has that premium weight and feel of having, of course, a metal shroud, right? And it also has a metal backplate. The VRM is also upgraded on this model where it has a higher number of power stages with higher operating specifications, okay? But now we want to actually talk about the RG Strix model. So the RG Strix model will come in with the standard model coming at 720, and then we will have the RG Strix overclocked model, which would be at 750, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about kind of what is going to be the benefit, I guess, of the ROG Strix model, right? Why would you want to get the ROG Strix potentially over, you know, the tough gaming model, right? So let's go ahead and take a look and see here what going to be the differences, what are going to be the differences between these. So one is going to be the RGB lighting. It's a little bit more dynamic, right? So it's two zones, just like the tough gaming graphics cards, but it feet, the ROG Strix card has a bolder kind of RGB design language here, right here with the Republic Gamers logo. And then it has the quad zone LED array. So there's pretty much four zones. It's kind of like a 360 degree lighting design on the rear um, of the actual PCB and uh, excuse me, the re the end, not of the PCB, but of the actual shroud. Um, and it looks really, really nice. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, you'll also notice here that the card is actually monochrome in the horizontal orientation. There's no fixed colors in it when it's in a horizontal orientation. It has a higher program clock speed. So again, even higher than the tough gaming model, it will come with a little bit of a higher program clock speed. The, of course, the cooler is even going to be larger and more performant, and it features our max contact design. So the max contact means that there's a machine finish to it, which just makes it essentially really, really smooth, really nice in terms of cleaning if you reapply thermal compounds or anything like that. But it's just a very performant thermal solution, six heat pipe configuration, max contact base plate, and of course, the triple axial tech base fans. You have that full metal shroud. You also have the metal back plate on there. The VRM is further upgraded, but probably maybe one of the most critical things that people may overlook, and this is similar to what we've talked about in the past with other cards, is going to be the power limits. So this card uh, will utilize the 12 volt high power connector. And then the default power limit on this is going to actually be higher than the standard. And then the max power limit is significantly higher. So you can actually see that the power limit here on the Tough Gaming or the dual card, it's 216 watts, whereas the max power limit that will be on the ROG Strix model will be 258 watts. Now, you do not need to adjust this in any way, shape, or form already out of the box. It will already be tuned and give you a very, very high level of performance. But uh, for users that sometimes essentially want to overclock and take on essentially what comes along with overclocking, then you will have essentially more headroom, right? So like I said, the default, um, I think FE is 220 watts. Like I said, the dual, dual and tough gaming are equivocally just almost about the same 216 watts, but you see it's a much bigger power limit that you have on the ROG Strix model. The ROG Strix model also incorporates our advanced PCIe power monitoring circuit. So the PCIe power monitoring circuit, um, it works by essentially having a detection mechanism. So when you're bringing in essentially power into the graphics card, it will be looking for a deviation. It's looking for, I think the ATX deviation spec is about 10%. So if essentially it notices that that input power is deviating heavily, the LEDs will flash, letting you know, hey, the input power, maybe there's a variability there. Now, that doesn't mean that your PSU is bad, but it could mean maybe your PSU is a little bit more marginal. Maybe the contacts aren't optimal. Maybe there's an issue with your extensions. Maybe there's some aspect that you may want to evaluate and you may want to check. On our other cards, it's more of a status indicator. So when you connect it, it will light and let you know, hey, I've got power, but there's not like an intelligent circuit that essentially is providing you some additional information. And then you also have the Fan Connect 2 headers, which are a nice supplemental form of connectivity if you want to have more fans that um, are connected inside your system. This could be nice for like a smaller, maybe like micro ATX or SFX type build. And those fans can respond specifically to the GPU temperature, okay? So HGO Computer says, if I wanted the RGB, I would buy this one. It's hard. I think the dual card is maybe my personal favorite in the 4070 lineup, just because I really love the aesthetic, especially pairing with something like the Prime. And I really love just how compact and easy it is to work with. But that Strix card is a really, really nice option. But I think, again, all of them uh, really work well. 
Um, so it really just comes down to what you're looking for. Uh, Mike uh, from HCOM Computers is also giving us a little bit of a heads up here. He says he appreciates right having essentially the up to power limit. Yeah, that is really kind of going to be the key benefit there outside of essentially because the more performant kind of thermal solution. But you can kind of see really across the board in each one of the areas, there are essentially those upgrades. And again, all of the cards are going to be cool, quiet and built to a very, very high degree. It just really comes down to, you know, your preference and your budget at which card you feel is going to make the most sense for you. OK, so that is going to cover us in terms of that. So um, somebody's asking about um, Mr. Matley says, I would have to agree. The dual would be my choice, and I'm a tough gaming obsessive this generation. Yeah, um, yeah, that that dual card is it is very hard to beat, right? I mean, when we just take a look at that, I think we hit, we nailed it, right? Where again, you know, from a price uh, price to performance to feature set it is going to be the lowest card that we're going to option, right? We're going to have that 600 or 610, and you can get in the black, you can get in the white. It's going to be actually cooler and quieter than even the FE card, right? 2.55 slot, 267 millimeters, no RGB, just a real nice, clean, compact, cool and quiet card. I think it's a fantastic option for a wide range of builders, right? Um, but it just comes down to your preference. Uh, the Strix card, again, it's going to look really, really nice and just give you even a little bit more performance, give you a little bit more margin, right? If you're interested in kind of that overclocking headroom and it's going to even be cooler and quieter. And of course you got that RGB flare and the tough gaming card, it also looks fantastic. So you really can't go wrong. Just pick the card that works best for you in terms of the aesthetics, the features and your budget. All right. Um, George is asking us, what happened to the Z790 Extreme and the Apex? Nothing happened to them. They are limited edition production runs. So sometimes we get people that ask about this going like, hey, what happened to this motherboard? So the Apex actually has been sold out. It is no longer available. Uh, so if you guys are just wondering, what's the Apex? Well, that, this is the Apex. This is one of my favorite motherboards that we've produced. Um, but it was a limited production run. So we've actually talked about this in our PCDIY group and our weekly streams. So if you're maybe just joining us for the first time, you actually want to be part of our group or watching our weekly streams to find out about all the latest information. Um, we will have a very small remaining budget of boards that are going to be essentially put out to channel partners. So I think like Micro Center, Newegg, um, and I'm not sure the other channel partners as of yet that will have a small assortment, but it will be a bundled pair. Uh, our recent restock that we had for the Asus store sold out uh, literally within, I think, 20, 30 minutes. It was it was very, very quick. So there is no more independent board. Uh, essentially, we had already sold out in the entire quantity, but due to high demand, we worked to get a little bit more allocation of the remaining end of run production, and they will be in a bundled pairing. So you'll be able to buy the Apex, but uh, it will be like in a bundled pair with memory. Um, so you'll it'll be like a, uh, the Apex with a certain memory kit. And like I said, these will be going live, I think, with Micro Center and a new egg in the not too distant future, probably, you know, within the next kind of week or two. So you can watch out for those, but they are sold out. Similarly with the Apex, uh, excuse me, with the Extreme, the Extreme is also uh, moved over into end of life production. Now this doesn't mean we're not supporting the motherboard, it won't get UE5 updates, it just means it's a limited production run. We've pretty much stopped producing it, so it is not an active, essentially available model. Um, we still have, of course, within our Z790 lineup, you can of course get the Hero, um, which is a fantastic motherboard if you're looking for a Z790 Maximus series board, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and go into our next uh, item right here. So we talked about our graphics cards. We talked about, of course, the 4070. And just as, I guess, a recap there, again, on the pricing, guys, um, the white card, right? So just as a quick recap uh, for reference there, the white will be um, $600 for the standard and then 610 for the overclocked model. Um, again, no difference between the cards. They're exactly the same. Just the overclocked model comes with a slightly higher pre-programmed boost clock that's just validated. That's all it means. You can still overclock both of the cards. So you could even overclock the overclock more, right? Um, assuming you, of course, account for everything that comes along with overclocking. Um, and the standard could potentially be overclocked. The main difference is just we've essentially validated that the overclock model is guaranteed to work at that overclocked parameter, okay? And then when we take a look at the ROG Strix model, uh, we'll recap the pricing right there really quickly. So for the ROG Strix model, uh, we will have the standard model, which will come in at 720, and then we will have the ROG Strix uh, overclocked model, which will be coming in at 750, okay? 
And uh, for reference, I think if you're wondering, um, these are, some people think that the coolers are the same from like the 4090 and the 4080 and the 4070. They're not. They look similar, but dimensionally, they're still very, very, very different. So like, take for instance, like if you go into the high end side, the ROG Strix like 4080, 4090, you're talking about like a 3.5 slot card. Here on the 4070, it's, more, it's much smaller. So I think it's a 3.2 slot. And then also dimensionally, it's actually a bit more compact. So you always want to actually check the dimensions, check the tech specs. Don't go off on the image because even some media have incorrectly reported that they it's the same cooler and it's not the same cooler. The cooler actually gets revised. Um, take for instance again, like on the 4090 to like the 4070, the 4090 will have actually more heat pipes um, and it even has things like a milled vapor chamber design. So there's different design implementations respective to the GPU that it's being used on, okay? Hey, Lano C, man, how happy to have you here, man. The Z790 Extreme is a monster. Yeah, it's a fantastic board. Uh, if you did get it, uh, it is an awesome board. That is it right here. This is one of my favorite boards. I mean, it's the Extreme. You know, it gives you all kinds of crazy, amazing stuff. You got the Anime Matrix display. You've got even an internal Thunderbolt header on there. You've got the Dim.2 adding card on there. You got the 10G LAN. You got the Voltition. Uh, you got tons of fan headers. You have dual V BIOS. So again, it's not for every single person, but it is the Extreme for a reason. So if you're looking for something that really does offer kind of all of those impressive features, functions, and specs, it is a great trade choice. All right, uh, let's go ahead and keep moving that along. Let me go ahead and just open up my doc file here. So we got, uh, uh, let me drop these in the chat here. So let me just make sure I drop these in the chat. Oh, I love that. Kev Kevin notes, um, so yeah, so Michael says it's the perfect board. And Kevin notes that my next board will be an extreme. Wow. Yeah, Kevin, he's already got, um, if you guys haven't checked him, we've covered Kevin's uh, um, build and kind of setup here. Uh, I think, Kevin, you have an Apex right now, I think, in your current build. So that's already a really, really nice board. That's a toss of Like, do you go Apex or do you go extreme? For me, I think I'd probably go with the Apex, but... The anime matrix on the extreme is really, really cool. And the 10G natively is also really nice. But like you could add a 10G card to the Apex. But I think if it was me, I think I'd probably go Apex. But uh, that's a hard one. All right, guys. So um, I think I dropped there. Yeah, the uh, if you guys can double check for me. Oh, no, I think I did drop it in there, right? The RG Strix and the dual card are in the chat. Okay, very good, guys. All right, let's wrap things up here on the monitor side, guys. So let me go ahead and bring these up here. All right, guys, just a, a quick updates on some monitors. We're going to go through these pretty quick. These are just some basic updates that we have here in terms of some models. So this is going to be the uh, Asus VZ279QG1R. Uh, this is just a nice entry-level base monitor uh, right here. It's going to be 27 inches, full HD, IPS, 75 hertz. Um, it does have a very, very thin bezel design, which is quite nice. It is quite compact. So if you're just looking for essentially like a nice, just basic monitor uh, that has a little bit larger format, right? So maybe Maybe just looking for something for general desktop productivity for browsing maybe as an upgrade to like a pre-existing pc you just want to get a new monitor that might be maybe a little bit sharper a little bit cleaner also maybe a little bit more power efficient a little bit more slim this could be a nice option for you right here also keep in mind compared to many other companies um, even on our entry monitors like this they do offer our three-year limited warranty many other manufacturers for similarly priced monitors may be only offering you a one-year warranty so there is going to be a difference in that regard you can see right here quite slim in terms of that 7.5 millimeter um, based uh, excuse me uh, profile so quite quite slim in terms of that regards right a nice little bump up from 60 hertz of course it's not a gaming uh, focused monitor but 75 hertz is just going to give you a little bit smoother uh, kind of desktop experience and you do have your baseline connectivity here with DisplayPort HDMI and then a 3.5 millimeter line out connection uh, which can work well for headphones or maybe like a little sound bar if you wanted to connect that to the actual uh, monitor as well okay so a nice simple monitor not super expensive but nice also in terms of still being able to have i think the ips based display um, and that nice clean compact slim profile okay so that is going to be the vz279 qg1r all right go ahead and drop that one in the chat
Okay, and next one right here, this is actually uh, maybe one of my favorite additions. So while this is not a gaming monitor, I think this is a really nicely balanced all around productivity monitor. For many of you, it could actually be a really nice option to your desk setup. So the VA34VCPSN, yeah, that's a big model number, but it does meet quite a number of really cool features and functions that are on this monitor. So let's actually take a look at it. Now, again, it denotes business, but you could entirely use this for general desktop productivity. You could actually also use it as a gaming display. Display. Of course, also, there are going to be maybe certain functions or features or specs that our dedicated gaming displays could, of course, even be better. But what do you have here? Well, you've got it actually a VA-based panel, 34 inches, 3440 by 1440, 1500R curvature, so not crazy, so it's not super aggressive in terms of the curvature, but gives you a little bit more immersion, a really nice a thin uh, profile in terms of the actual bezel. But you do have one here, we can see USB-C integrated with PD support, so 65 watts. So if you want to run this to a laptop, like maybe our ZenBook or VivoBook or maybe a G14, that's great because you can actually power the laptop or maybe one of our mini PCs, you could actually pass the display signal with the power and actually power that device in one single cable. Really nice, really convenient. Um, really great option also for maybe you that might have maybe an Apple ecosystem device. Maybe you got something like a MacBook, 65 watts works really well for that. Now, another item is going to be here is pretty cool. This has an integrated RJ45 jack on it. It has Ethernet connectivity built into it. So you can run Ethernet straight into it, but then you could actually pass the actual Ethernet signal through the USB-C to that device. So you can actually be um, connecting there. So that's actually pretty cool in terms of that flexibility. You have an integrated USB hub that's also on this monitor, and it actually has faster than standard refresh rate. So this is actually, I believe, a 100 hertz refresh rate on this display. So it gives you a really nice balance. I think for the price, again, a larger format based display, you've got the ethernet connectivity, the USB, um, that curve, right? Uh, the USB PD power delivery, all of that simplified and built in to be able to give you, I think, just a nice monitor for desktop productivity and general use, right? And again here, uh, a lot of options in terms of how you can connect everything, right? Display port, HDMI, USB-C, the USB hub, RJ45, and then that again, that 3.5 millimeter jack, which again is gonna be a great option if you wanna run out to headphones or you wanna run out to a sound bar or speakers. Now this does have built in two watt speakers. Um, there's two sets there. So great if you're just maybe using things for like online meetings, general calls, maybe listening to some podcasts, maybe streaming a little bit of music or watching videos online. These are not gonna be the most dynamic speakers, but for just general usage, it's nice to just be able to have something in there. Like again, if you're watching a stream, listening to a podcast, watching some YouTube, things along those lines, it's gonna be more than enough and great to be able to simplify the experience. And especially also if you kind of sometimes wanna move away from using headphones, you wanna relax a little bit, you don't wanna have something on your ears, you could just go back and utilize the integrated speakers and you'd be good to go. You do have a uh, high level of ergonomic adjustment. So you can see you have height adjustment, swivel and tilt that are all present in here. Integrated cable management on the rear as well. And it does support Visa mounting as well. Now, uh, one cool thing is on this model, it does have our more advanced ASUS blue light filtering technology. So it's not just standard presets, it's actually a customizable scale. So you can go in and actually detail, uh, excuse me, dial in the blue light level filtering that you find maybe most pleasing to you um, and helps you most in your scenario, kind of more, most of your situation. All right, and also as part of kind of our ESG, so our focus on sustainability, you'll be seeing a lot of the products be coming with a big focus on even more environmentally sensitive, not only material composition, so actually what they're comprised of, but also meeting actually a very high level of sustainability when it comes to the packaging. So here in our packaging right here, um, you'll find that one, we're actually using up to words of 80% recycled cardboard. There's no glues, there's no tapes, there's nothing like that. So if you ever sometimes have to go into recycling, it can actually be quite critical. Some actually municipalities will restrict actually any item from going to recycling when it has glues, layers, certain types of inks, you think that actually can be recycled and it cannot even be recycled. So uh, these are all elements that we're attempting to evaluate and be mindful of um, to just be able to try to do our part in terms of contributing to something that can be more sustainable and can be more environmentally friendly. All right, guys, so this is going to be the VA34VCPSN docking monitor. And I think it is overall a well-balanced design. Let me go ahead and just double check here on the tech specs uh, on this one as I did remember if I wanted to make sure that refresh rate that I communicated was correct. Yes, it is a 100 hertz refresh rate. So you do have even a faster refresh rate than normal. And for those of you that, again, are maybe not gamers, the cool thing about that monitor, even at 100 hertz refresh rate, 
is um, it's really nice because it just gives you a smoother desktop experience. Like when you're just moving windows around, you're kind of double clicking, opening up windows, things like that. It's just a nicer experience. Yeah. Um, Michael Brown says no USB daisy chaining. There's actually no USB daisy chain support. It's not accurate to do that. The daisy chain actually comes through DisplayPort protocol. So we actually have our ProArt series monitors, like all the CRV monitors, and we've talked about these in some prior streams. Those actually do support it, but that actually requires a more complex and specialized design implementation. So you can essentially kind of connect one monitor to another monitor, and then you don't have to run that back to the graphics card. You can actually daisy chain directly off of the monitor. So we do actually have that, and that is stipulated within the tech specifications for the monitor. So if you're interested in daisy chain support, you can take a look at our ProArt series, which do not all models, but we have select models that do feature daisy chain monitor support. Okay. Hey, Tom, uh, the volume you feel is a little bit low. I'll go ahead and raise it just a little bit more. All right. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit better for you. If you can let me know if that sounds good for you, uh, we'll go from there. But um, that is going to be essentially our two monitor updates. All right, guys. So last but not least, let's get ready here to jump into our promotions. And we will go from there. And I think I'll have time just to be able to go ahead and touch on some of our PCDIY, uh, one PCDIY builder spotlight. All right, guys, <clears throat> get a little sip of water here. All right, we're going to bang out um, as many of these promotions as we can here. So let me go ahead and get through these here. Give me a second to go ahead and open these up here. I think probably a lot of them are actually going to be graphics cards. If anybody's been looking for hopefully some maybe some graphics cards, I think we've got some really solid little promotions, um, some small, some big. Uh, some of these promotions actually include up to, I think there's models that have like 80 or $90 off, so they can actually be a pretty reasonable one. And I think even on the most entry level model, it might be something like $130 off. So pretty good, um, actually nice savings. Here we go. Yep, we got our routers here. And anybody that's also interested in a high spec router, we're gonna have definitely some awesome router deals um, that are gonna be going on here. With I know uh, we have, I think all the routers I'm gonna be talking about. The minimum is fifty dollars off, and one of them is a hundred dollars off in terms of the routers. So some really nice promotions that we've got going on right there. Okay, so let's get ready to go into it, guys. We're gonna go quick and fast on these so make sure to watch them while you can if anybody wants the promo links in there i don't know if i'm going to drop in every single promo link in there i will try to have a uh, featured post in the group a little bit later so if you guys want to check them out you guys can but let's go ahead and run through these all right so first up we've got the rg rapture gtax 11000 pro this is a super high performance based unit you're going to really have an outstanding experience for those that are looking for essentially a very performant router this unit is going to give you a 2.5 gigabit wan it's going to also give you 10 gig lan it's got four additional ports that are going to be on here it then has two usb ports including a high speed usb port okay um, and that 10 gigabit can even be wired versus wan or lan so that means even if you were to go crazy you had a uh, 2.5 5 gigabit or 10 gigabit isp service that 10g port can actually serve as a wan this has a 2 gigahertz quad core soc so one of the absolute fastest chipsets that you can actually get on the market in terms of its performance this also has the expanded uni4 spectrum which is ideal to be able to give you ultra high fast performance for wi-fi 6 based clients so this unit is going to actually be a tri-band based model so if we actually go over into the tech specs and we check this you will actually see that when we're breaking down the bands um, we actually have three bands we have 2.4 5 gigahertz and then that other 5 gigahertz but that 5 gigahertz works on the expanded level and this is also the most performant configuration you can see the 2.4 is not a 2x2 but it is a 4x4 configuration so we have 4x4 4x4 and 4x4 and even on the memory this is going to be packed in with one gigabyte of ddr4 memory so an awesome high performance unit and yes it even has rgb and you can customize the rgb if you want to actually be able to control the rgb so uh, the GT AX 11,000 Pro, check it out if you're interested in a seriously high performance unit. And yes, this unit does support AI mesh, so you can go ahead and pair this together. Now we're going to go into even a higher end model with the RG Rapture GT AXE 16,000. So this is 
uh, and it was pretty much the flagship router that you can get, right? This guy is coming in at $100 off, so it is expensive. It's $600, but that's $100 less than its normal price, normally $700. And here, you pretty much almost get everything I talked to you about, but you just take it to the next level. This goes to quad band versus it being a tri-band based router. So you get four bands, absolutely just super impressive in terms of its overall performance. Wi-Fi 6C, optimally designed to pair, of course, with all of the latest and greatest base devices like on motherboards, mini PCs, laptops, phones, tablets, whatnot. If you want the fastest performance, match that Wi-Fi 6C router with a Wi-Fi 6C client. You've got that 2.5 gigabit WAN. You've got dual 10G on this guy, not just one, but two 10G ports. You then have your four uh, additional ethernet ports on there. And then you've got two USB ports on there as well on this guy. So an absolutely uh, very, very high end spec based unit on this, on this router. And again, very similar in terms of the overall chipset performance and the radio configuration on this model as well. So if we head right over here, you can see again, four bands, four by four, four by four, four by four, and four by four. Again, two gigahertz quad core processor and not one gig, but two gigs of DDR4 memory, absolutely built for the uh, fastest level of performance when it comes to Wi-Fi. All right, guys, that's going to be the GTAX 1600, uh, 16,000, excuse me, and that is going to be $100 off. Um, my actually probably pick of the, I think the overall pick of the group here, uh, my overall pick of the group is going to be this one right here, which is going to be the RT. AXE 7800. This is $50 off and it's really maybe my favorite go-to router for somebody that's saying, I don't want to go super, super, super expensive, but I really kind of want the best balance of performance, range, feature set, expansion. This is going to be a tri-band and Wi-Fi 6E. So before to get this, you really had to go quite a bit more expensive, but this is really the great balance of really giving you tri-band, which I think is the best option right now for right now and in the future, because you're reserving that third band so that if you really want to get great performance in a mesh configuration, you've got a third band, you get 2.5 gigabit ethernet connectivity on here, a very fast performing chipset, the Wi-Fi 6E. Um, it's overall, I think, a really great price and a really great balance. So this is my kind of go-to recommendation for a lot of people um, within kind of this price band here. So the, uh, excuse me, the RT AXE 7800. Um, so again, if we take a look here at the chipset specs, Again, this is 2x2, 4x4, 2x2, 1.7 gigahertz quad core, 512 megabytes of memory on this unit. And then you've got still the 2.5 gigabit WAN that's going to be on there. And then you can also see that you've got four more ports and a USB port that's going to be on this unit. So that is going to be my kind of go-to pick right there. Okay. Um, and then for those that, again, want maybe something even a little bit cheaper, still want a very performance-based option, the RTAX86U Pro, great choice right here, $50 off also has the ability you can pair two of these together or with any other asus router to be able to give you even more coverage if you want it this is still a very very good option especially for people that might be up until about maybe like the 2500 2800 square foot um, maybe single floor although this could work still pretty well in a dual dual floor kind of environment but i think if you start to get into dual floor um, or like kind of two-story home environments i do probably recommend a tri-band based router um, but here you have a three by three and a four by four, still very good coverage because of that three by three and four by four quad core chipset based design and one gigabyte worth of RAM. And this model also does have, um, you can see Ethernet ports right here. You've got the 2.5 gigabit WAN and you're also going to have the high speed USB and then you've got your traditional LAN ports on there. So I'm a big fan of this guy as well as the RTAX 68U. And this is kind of a sweet spot. A lot of people really buy into this model and it's a very, very solid option. Uh, let's see right here. Uh, yeah, we've got some feedback right here. I have the ROG Rapture router and I'm so happy with it. No issues at all. Yeah, I agree. That's uh, it's an awesome router in terms of that. Okay. Um, one of my favorite keyboards that we have in our lineup right here sees a nice savings, $40 off. This is the going to be the ROG Strict Scope RX TKL Wireless Deluxe. I'm a huge fan of TKL. Um, you see a lot of times here at the desk, I'm using either like the Falchion or the Claymore 2. Um, the TKL just means that you don't have that numpad. It doesn't put strain on your labor when you kind of have your arm out right there. It just makes it more comfortable and you can angle your, out, your mouse. And 
With the RX base switches, they're smooth, they're consistent, they feel nice, they have nice centralized lighting. And the big thing, the really big thing that I love about our RX switches is they feel so much more stable than a traditional cherry um, or center weighted stem because there's a four point stem design. So when you are hitting essentially these keycaps, they feel quite a bit more consistent and even because it's a four point stem. Uh, we also have improved stabilizers on here. In terms of your actual connectivity, you have actually three modes of connectivity. You have USB-C, you have Bluetooth, and you also have 2.4 gigahertz gaming grade wireless that's built into this model. So lots of options right there. Um, you have integrated onboard memory profiles that you can uh, dynamically switch back and forth between. So very, very nice. This being the wireless deluxe model means you're also going to get an included wrist rest uh, for the unit as well. So that's nice, clean and compact. You've got the nice privacy key and large control key when you gotta, gotta move over your pinky. Um, overall, really one of my favorite options. And another nice thing right here, a lot of people kind of maybe forget about this, but PBT double shot keycaps. Um, your PBT double shot keycaps essentially mean, what do you get? The durability is gonna be much better. Traditional keycap, it will wear over time. It will start to get a little bit shiny, a little bit kind of maybe uh, greasy, right? You can actually start to have legend fade, but when you have a double shot keycap, um, it mitigates kind of build up to shine and you essentially won't ever have the legend fade out because it's actually molded in through the entire way through. So that is gonna be a premium point. Sometimes to just buy another set of keycaps that might be PBT or double shot could cost you another 30 to $50 conservatively. So that comes in there. Um, there's actually no need for a, a lubricant. Um, our, our, our NX base switches actually already do, do come actually pre-lubed. So there's a small amount of pre-lube. Our Azoth keyboard, which is really kind of designed for the custom community that want to take apart their switches and lubricate them further. Actually, even it comes included with a little bit, uh, it comes with actually a key, uh, excuse me, a keycap opener, a lubing station, Crytox 205, pretty much the whole thing. But here, you don't need it for an RX base switch. Um, the optical base switch and the stem mechanism along with the X stabilizer, it's already very smooth and consistent. So um, there's really kind of no need to for you to go in and quote unquote, try to go and lube this type of switch. Okay, so that is gonna be, I think a great option right there. And I'm definitely gonna link that one in the chat because that's a great deal, uh, $40 off um, for that model, okay? Uh, for those looking for a headset, we've got the Tough Gaming H1 Wireless. This is a great headset. Um, it's got a nice, good base uh, performance, um, good mid-range, solid detailing there. It's comfortable, very lightweight. I think this is under 300 grams. Yeah, 295 grams, up to 15 hours battery life. It has this very nice compact USB-C adapter. You can plug this into your phone, you can plug it into your switch, you can plug it into your laptop and your desktop, and you're gonna have reliable, consistent wireless. Um, no issues with like pairing or syncing for Bluetooth. You don't have to worry about kind of Bluetooth interference or having more compression that Bluetooth introduces. Just plug it in and you're gonna have low latency audio experience that's gonna be available to you. It's, it's comfortable, it's lightweight, and it's $30 off, 60 bucks, for this headset, I think it's a great option right here. And again, up to 15 hours battery life for this unit. So this is gonna be the Tough Gaming H1 wireless headset. And it's nice, clean, cool, and compact in terms of its overall design. So I think it's pretty sweet. So again, um, I think this is a really nice option, 60 bucks uh, instead of the normal price for $90, all right? Um, ROG Apparel, guys, um, you're, I'm wearing this one right here. This is the ROG, come on. Uh, patch pocket t-shirt. It's actually a pretty cool design. Like it actually has this little patch. I don't use the patch on the t-shirt. I actually put it in my bag. So I'll like, I'll, when I have like my bag that I'm taking with me um, or maybe in my backpack, I just sometimes I'll put maybe like, um, you could put coins. Sometimes I put a flash drive in there. I might put, um, you know, some coinage, different things like that in there. And I have that in there, but actually it, it will, it's a hook and loop faster. So you can take it on, you can take it off. You could literally have it on your shirt. But we have, I think maybe about like, 10 to 15 apparel items. So everything from our shirts to some sweatshirts to our windbreaker to I think our, um, you know, more winter uh, inspired kind of clothing. So like our, uh, you know, even windproof jacket is all on sale. So uh, t-shirts you're gonna maybe see like sometimes like 10 to $15 and on some of the other items it could actually be more 20 to $30. And I think on one or two of the other items, maybe like the higher end, um, like winter jacket that we had, I think that might've been even maybe like 50 or $60 off. So so some pretty cool promos. So definitely check them, check them out. 
Um, hey, Michael. Yeah, in terms of higher performing microphone, our higher performing mic microphones would be for sure in the ROG series than in the Tough Gaming series. So you, those could be models like the ROG Strix Fusion series, uh, ROG Strix Fusion 2, or the ROG Delta S series would be those models. Okay. Um, We've also got our Tough Gaming fans on here. Um, I don't know if we still have HTO Computers in here. HTO Computers, I know, is, has hands-on with these. These are a really, really great fan. Um, I think they're very hard to beat in terms of their overall performance to value to durability. Um, so you have a dual LED array design on this model. It includes three fans in here with the controller. So the controller is great because you've got an older motherboard that doesn't even have any ARGB headers, you can still use these. So they can just run directly from the controller and there's tons of patterns. It's much better than if you look at sometimes these other fans that might be like on certain e-tailers, they come with like a little like low cost remote and it has like certain patterns. There, we give you a lot of dynamic and really nice patterns. I actually have a dedicated live stream that goes through all the patterns and I showed you the Tough Gaming fans. Um, the big thing in here is that we're using an advanced FDB bearing. Uh, if you compare this even to, let's say, some of the other nice fans that are on the market, you might be surprised. Um, you can take a look at, let's say, some of the other, let's say, Lian Li fans, or you can take a look at some cooler Master Sickle Flow fans, and you might find that they're might using maybe um, like a rifle bearing, maybe a, a hydraulic bay bearing, right? You could be looking at maybe like 80, 100, 120,000 hours. These are 250,000 hours and they feature a more advanced lubricating based design. This type of design is beneficial, especially when you're talking about different axes of implementation. So whether you go vertical or horizontal, they can provide a more consistent experience. And also, like I said, that enhanced reliability. So I think for their price, they're very competitive in terms of offering that level of a bearing quality, which normally you would see reserved for something like a Noctua class, so much more expensive type of fan. Um, and traditionally, that would be more common for something like a non-RGB fan. So again, here, this triple pack, it's $50, so $10 off. Doesn't seem like a huge savings, but already the value was already strong with these. So again, three fans with the included controller, Simple and easy to be able to wire up, just you know, standard four pin and ARGB connectors that you have in here, right? Mr. Matt Lee says, he says, vibrant, silent, and great performers. Uh, H2O Computers throws some love, says, yeah, killer fans, $10 off is a nice value, right? Sue Min, oh man, Sue Min, haven't talked to Sue Min in a bit, but one of our best uh, fans out there. He says, I want the white tough fans. Yes, we will actually have the white versions. If I scroll all the way down here, uh, we will see that we do actually have a white version of a fan and it is going to be available um, in uh, late May. So we will actually have the, these fans in white in May. So let's keep going down and you'll see right here, they will have, they will have them in white. So we will have the white versions of those fans in May. Difference between Z690 and Z790 uh, V10. So I'm not going to talk about a uh, competitor because <laughs> we're Asus, but I can tell you if you're wondering about kind of the inherent difference, there is a little bit of a chipset difference, but one of the main differences, I guess, for you as a user that you would benefit from is on our side for Z790, Z790 boards tend to have a little bit of a higher signal integrity level for DDR5 overclocking margin. Um, now, if you took a 13th gen series CPU and you put that on a Z690 motherboard, you're still going to get very, very good DDR5 overclocking margin. We can actually hit about 7,000 MT even for more entry boards, like let's say like a prime motherboard. But similarly, if you put that like on a Z790 motherboard, you could be seeing, of course, you have to account for memory controller variants because different memory controllers um, sometimes can get a little bit higher in terms of their frequency. Some operate a little bit lower because you're talking about overclocking, which isn't guaranteed, right? But you can see more a higher likelihood to be like 72, 74, 7600. Now that is going to be in dual, uh, excuse me, in uh, two DIM configurations that are single rank. So that is going to be nominally things like 16 and 32 gigabyte kick configurations, and also potentially 48 gigabyte kick configurations. Once you go to 64, 64 sees lower scaling because that is generally going to be a dual ranked memory kit. Okay. Uh, Mr. Matt Lee says, I didn't even know that the white tough gaming fans were coming in May. Have I been in a hole? <laughs> um, yes, no worries, man. Make sure to keep it tuned. We will have them in May and they look fantastic. They look really, really great. And of course, we have our Tough Gaming GT502, which comes in white and black, and they will pair perfectly with our Tough Gaming GT502. All right, guys, let's get through these graphics cards, wrapping it up here. We've got the Tough Gaming GT660 Ti Evo, six gigabyte. I think this is a really solid card for those that might just be looking to upgrade a system. Get into some esports gaming. You want to be able to play games at 1080p with good eye quality 
quality uh, IQ settings. So image quality settings, right? Um, and you don't want to go super expensive. This comes in now with a hundred and thirty dollar discount at two hundred and thirty dollars. So I think if you're just looking for, like I said, a solid card to be able to put in, it's going to be cool, quiet, power efficient, not be very taxing your power supply. And like I said, maybe you're playing more indie titles, esport related titles, just moderate gameplay experience. This is a solid option to be able to put into your system in terms of giving you some performance um, for that build. So that is going to be the Tough Gaming uh, GT, excuse me, uh, GTX 1660 Ti. Uh, give me one second here. And I'll just check right here. One second here. I'm going to check my notes here on just average frame rate for this. It's changed a little bit probably in terms of overall the uh, average frame rate because, of course, you're going to have some variability that's introduced over time uh, with improvements in drivers and things along those lines, right? But here, uh, if we take a look here, let's see. This is going to be resident to... It's, I don't know, um, you can look at, let's look at, look at Battlefield, if we take a look at Battlefield performance. So Battlefield with that card, you could play that with that card at over 100 frames a second, right? And then even at 1440p, that would still be over 75 frames a second, essentially 80 frames a second. So you can still see that is a very capable card in terms of its overall relative performance. So, um, you know, you're not taking a look at a huge limitation in terms of the overall, um, like I said, ability of that card. So again, that is going to be the 1660 Ti Evo, uh, $230. Moving up here, we've got the GTX 1660 Super. A little bit more, this one you're going up to $270. So that one's $60 off in terms of your savings. That 1660 Ti though is the biggest savings there, $130 off. This one's $60 off for the 1660 Super. We then move over to the, to the dual RTX 3050. The 3050, this one, you also step up to eight gigabytes worth of memory. And this one comes in at 290. I think this one is maybe one of the overall kind of strongest values right there because you then now jump into a much more modern um, chipset where you're gonna have AV1 decoding support. You're gonna have even better H.264, H.265 encoding. Very good efficiency. You have support for a lot of the latest generation NVIDIA-based technologies that are also being accelerated off of there, including even optional support for things like uh, DLSS, and you also have support for things like RTX. Although generally with this card, you generally probably wouldn't be playing um, RTX to a demanding level, but maybe for some basic titles, you could be taking a look at that. But again here, I think a very solid card for 1080p and for entry kind of 1440p uh, based gaming. Not ultra high refresh rate 1440p, but definitely it also all comes down to the game engine that you're playing, right? Different games are very demanding, you know, Ori in the Blind Forces, or in the Blind Forest versus Forza versus Company Heroes versus Cyberpunk. They all would have very, very different uh, kind of gameplay experiences resident to the resolution. Um, the 3060 we have on promo here, and this is the white model. So this one's 20 bucks off, $350 uh, for the actual GeForce RTX. 3060 dual card, compact, cool, quiet, looks nice. This dual model also has a really nice white backplate to it as well. Uh, I don't know if I have the images for it right here, but it does have a white backplate. So it does come included with a white backplate. And I really love the white Axial Tech fans. I think that they look really, really nice there as well. We then have the RTX 3060 V2. So this is kind of just the alternate version here and it's going to be in black. Okay, and so this one is going to be coming in at 379, but here this one also does step up to more memory. You have 12 gigabytes of memory. Now, memory is a little bit variable because your GPU performance is actually a bit more important than the memory because even if you have lots of memory, if the graphics card isn't performant enough to be able to take advantage of the additional memory, it's not necessarily as much of a factor, but this can, and maybe some edge cases, give you a little bit more margin to be able to have a little bit more flexibility for certain types of maybe textures, depending on the game engines that you're playing. Uh, then 3060 Ti, we can see we have a $20 promo here. This is now definitely stepping up to the class of cards, similar like that 3060. We're talking about high refresh rate 1080p gaming, modern image quality settings definitely bumped up a bit, and definitely being able to have very, very solid 1440p um, gaming performance, where even you're talking about high refresh rate 1440p gaming experience as well. Okay. 
3060 Ti also, the white model also on sale. So another $20 off on there. And then we've got two last ones. The 4080 is on promo. 4080 is 80 bucks off. So we have our RTX 4080 tough gaming graphics card, normally $1399, right now $80 for $1320. So that's 80 bucks off. That is going to be a cool, quiet, and fast card. And then we've got the RTX 4080 ROG Strix Space Graphics card for $50 off. All right. All right. So there we guys goes. That wraps out our, our promotions right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into our PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So let me go ahead and open up my forms here. Here bring up our actual pc diy builder spotlight submission form and we will get ready to wrap up our stream so give me one second right here and again uh if you guys are not i'd love to have you guys part of our asus pc diy group so as always if you guys can Make sure to go ahead and check out the group. If you're not a member, it's an amazing community. We just broke 43,000 members. Uh, it's a great space that you can go ahead and ask about all things ASUS. Uh, we have, of course, we've got milder, we've got builders, we've got modders, we've got overclockers, we've got photographers, we've got gamers. We have everybody kind of that in the PCDIY ecosystem is present in this group. And, um, you know, we also do strive to keep a respectful environment. We do have associated group rules. So sometimes if you've been in some other spaces and sometimes you feel that sometimes you can't, you can't ask questions or kind of maybe people will uh, add a lot of conjecture, we do try to maintain a positive and productive group environment. So we'd love to have you there if you're not part of our PCDIY group. Let me go ahead and get ready here to bring over the build here. Give me one second. Hey, Power GPU, man, fantastic to have you here. Is this the first time that you're joining our stream? You're joining us right at the end of the stream, but uh, you'll get to maybe see one of the coolest parts, and hopefully um, you will, in the future, maybe submit one of your awesome builds uh, to be featured here in the PC Iowa Builder Spotlight, because I would love to be able to go ahead and showcase it. So let's get ready to go ahead and take a look at our first PC Iowa Builder Spotlight submission. This is going to be coming in here from, let me see here, does this one have a name? <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and bring this one up here. Okay, <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, the person didn't have a name there. This is going to be from Danny. All right, this is going to be from Danny, guys. Yeah, Power GPU, definitely. I would love to feature it here. We do essentially always have a section at the very end of our stream that's called our PC Diary Web Builder Spotlight, where we actually feature builds from our community as well, actually, from our Powered by Asus partners. So let's go ahead and take a look at Danny's system. The name of the system here is Don't Tell Your Girlfriend Here. Um, but, you know, maybe that's because of how much he spent on the system. I'm not sure. But, you know, um, hopefully they get to share this, this system together here because it is a pretty nice looking system. So let's go ahead and bring up our submission form for it and our images for it. All right, let's take a look here. And I've got it down here. All right, perfect. Sorry about that delay, guys. I had to just get our images ready here. All right, let's take a look. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got going on. Let's go ahead and see. First and foremost, we're already getting a little bit of some really kind of cool, just subtle vibes in terms of the color scheme. I'm really digging this. We've got, of course, some black. We've got some silver. We have a little bit of white accent. And then we have a little bit of a nice kind of contrast where we have a little bit, I'd say, like a blue teal, almost kind of like an aquamarine type of vibe. I'm really digging that. I like the contrast here between the white and that. We can already tell. I know this from these slat angles right here and uh, this design that this is going to be an apex board. We can also lightly tell from the white PCB this is going to be an apex base board. So I know this is going to be a Z790 base build. And I also love the beautiful finishing that we did on that apex there with just a little bit of chrome accent. Uh, some people don't realize that we actually really designed the boards to always look good, not only with, with RGB lighting, but without RGB lighting. And that's one of the design accents that we do purposely for non-RGB lighting uh, setups. So now, wow, there we go. So we're pulling the whole system back out and we're taking a look right here. And this is pretty slick. This is really, really nicely done. So um, really clean setup right here. You can see that they've definitely gone for a performance-based configuration, which would make sense, right? We're talking about a Maximus Apex build here. So hashtag more megahertz. You're talking about pushing those clock speeds. 
So you can see right here, you've got a push and pull fan configuration, high performing AIO solution from our friends over at EK. You've also got EK fans that are also situated in there. A beautiful, of course, ROG Strix based graphics card with that really nice edge lighting design, which actually I think complements, I think a little bit of kind of this synergy between these nice little just horizontal lines that you have from the end of the tail light design right here that also align with the slash type design here on the apex. I'm digging that kind of synchronicity. I'm digging that vibe. I love also right here, just that little bit of that recess profile to see the full ROG on the actual Chrome accenting that's there. That looks really, really nice. And then they also add in a little bit of subtle lighting flare right here, which just fills a little bit of that space in and you get a little bit of depth and contrast. It's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of traditional mounting versus vertical mounting. Vertical mounting, I think it sometimes be a little heavy, can cut stuff off. I like sometimes seeing a little bit of partitioning, but really nice job, very clean cable management done here. So you don't really have anything to contend or compete or negate here. It's cable routed really nicely with a really clean look and feel. Pulling a little bit further back, we can see that nice opened up shot right there. Looks really clean, looks really nice in terms of its overall setup and layout. Um, and I mean, this is, a, you know, it's a high-end build. You know, there's really nothing to gate here. Um, you know, some people would say that they'd rather have, of course, maybe like a reverse oriented type of fan flow, right? Or maybe have something swapped so that you don't have these rear. And we see sometimes people play around with this where they'll put like a sticker right here to maybe take away from the side that you shouldn't see. To me, I don't view that as negative. Um, I, I'm entirely fine with it, but there are some people that sometimes want that. But the overall layout is on point. It's very well cable managed, really clean. And I really, like I said, the contrast and color play that we have going with the lighting. And uh, the little bit of the stabilizer is kind of cool. It would have been interesting to see if they could have used the included um, GPU standoff support that we include with the graphics card, because it's a bit thinner than this. And it might have been able to sit within maybe the spacing that you have here. It's a little bit trickier. I know that's one of the cool things about our GT502 is that it's kind of designed to have that spacing so that if you want to use the support, you can use the support a little bit more easily. Um, now it looks also right here that they've got one, of course, the right angle connectors to be able to clean up that, of course, cable routing experience, which can be more optimal, especially for having that kind of compressed space that you have when you're going in with something like an O11, where it's almost impossible to have a 4080 or 4090, a large card and have that work within the actual tempered glass side panel, uh, compared to something like our GT502, where it's a split chamber design, but we purposely made sure that there was space so that it's not pressing up against the cable. So them going with this right angle connector is quite nice. Um, we can also see right here that they did use the dim.2 add-in card. That's really nice because subtle point, you guys might not realize a cool thing about the board at the Apex here is that when you install the graphics card, you're not limiting access to the M.2 slot. So I don't have to remove my actual graphics card just to be able to put in M.2 SSD. That dim.2 slot allows you to just pull that slot out uh, excuse me, pull that uh, dim.2 card out and then add in your M.2 SSDs. It's very, very simple and really, really nice. Um, so HO Computers is giving some love right here. It says, very clean, well done build. The white and black contrast looks great. Power GPU thrown some love. Uh, great builders um, do some fantastic jobs in terms of their overall fit and finish and execution. So I, I think that's a very nice kudos that they're throwing out some love that says a very clean build. Uh, we're also getting some love here. It says very nice build as well. Uh, Power GPU, I will, uh, you can either maybe DM me or, or tag, but we actually have a dedicated form link um, just actually for our PBA partners, but it's a simple Google form. It allows you to upload your photos and your submission notes, but I will go ahead and see if I can send that your way, okay? Um, we also got beautiful build as well. Fantastic, right? So let's see, Mr. Mal, I see 13 fans, 16, including the GPU. That's one. <laughs> That's one hecking airing mover rig there. Enjoy the subtle tones to the lighting, not overpowering, just enough to draw the eyes. I would agree. Um, not super crazy, not super powered. And I like that you can see, like I said, elements, right? You haven't super overpowered the lighting to take away some of the stylistic elements. Like the Strix card does a really great job of this, where you have, of course, these really nice subtle points where we have, of course, the machine finishing that we've done on the back plate. And you can see that because the, the lighting's not necessarily overpowering it. You haven't thrown these other things on there. So it's that nice balance of, I think, giving you a really clean aesthetic. And here, guys, you can see just how tight that fit is, right? Look how much space you have between that tempered side glass side panel and the cable. And probably without that connector, they would run into the challenge that O11 builders have run into and has been a strength for our GT502 chassis that you probably literally would be 
crimping in and pushing and flexing against that cable, which is something you don't want to do. Um, we're here with the right angle connector, right? You can go ahead and get that in there and then you could swoop over or you could swoop under. It's up to you. Are you team swoop over or are you team swoop under? Which one are you? Which one would you prefer? All right? Um, so overall, fantastic guys. A very, very cool, clean build. Um, I'm definitely a fan. Let's go ahead and uh, just show a little, two, like maybe two side-by-side -side images here. And let me bring up his submission form. So give me one second and uh, we'll kind of just break up two shots here, maybe something like that. Yeah, I think here we'll kind of show that off there. Okay, perfect. And let me bring up his submission form. So give me one second. All right, yep. All right, I got his submission form. Throw that up there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here at the submission form. So this is gonna be from, let's see, Danny, okay? And uh, you guys, uh, this is not Danny's first build, which it looks quite nicely executed, so that doesn't surprise me. Uh, was not a sponsored build. Uh, does the build have a theme? It's white, black with some light blue on the RGB. Three words to describe the build is cost of a wedding, <laughs> okay? Uh, and the name of the build was Don't Tell Your Girlfriend. In terms of the actual components that we've got on here, we have a 13900K in terms of the CPU, an EK AIO 360 uh, AIO, right? Um, an ROG Maximus Z790 Apex. We then have the G-Skill Trident memory in there. He went with 7800 MT memory CL36. That's absolutely some super performant DDR5, some of the absolute fastest memory you can get. And normally, um, you know, I recommend to most people, you know, 13th gen is very strong. You can usually run generally a 7000 MT with pretty high consistency. There will be some CPUs that have a little bit more variability in terms of their memory controller um, that you won't be able to. And on Z790, you can generally see, you know, pretty good success starting again 72, 74, maybe even 7600. But definitely you start to see more margin. And one of the big benefits of a two DIM board versus a four DIM board is going to be that increased stability for even higher clock speeds. So that's where you really seeing the Maximus Apex shine with a 7800 MT memory kit installed. Got two 500 gigabyte, uh, looks like SATA SSDs in there. And then um, two additional Samsung M.2 SSDs that are installed in there, 250 gigabyte and a 500 gigabyte, and then a one terabyte Kingston SSD. In terms of the graphics card, pretty much the best of the best. He's got an ROG Strix 4090 graphics card installed OC edition. This is inside of an O11 in terms of the chassis. And then he's got a 1500 watt power supply. So definitely a lot more needs. I would be surprised if this system under full load is probably even pulling maybe a, I don't even think probably 700 watts. Um, you know, even if it's heavily overclocked, you're, you're going to be consistently under, you're not even going to be breaking a thousand watts. Um, so definitely quite a bit more power supply, but Hey, you know, it's a very performant power supply. Um, they're, uh, then of course have Windows and then EK Vidar fans that they have in there. Pretty much all, they're all EK Vidar fans uh, all throughout there. Um, very, very nice setup in terms of that. Overall, um, it's probably a little bit less than this. So it puts 5,700 in terms of the overall price, 5,800 in total, but that's including two, three monitors and then the peripherals. So actually it would be a bit less. You probably knock off about maybe another $1,500 just taking out um, his peripherals and his monitors, right? Um, so going out and finishing that up here. Um, so the budget in total uh, was, he says is about 7,000 or so uh, higher than that with Hungarian VAT, which is 27%. So he's actually out of Hungary. Okay. Uh, what aspect of the build were they most proud of? The clean white black look and the performance. Yeah, this is absolutely going to be flagship level gaming performance. Is there anything that they would change about the build? They would maybe consider doing a custom loop right so going into uh, water cooling and how long did it take him put together the system it took him um around four months because of course it was had to get all the parts right and uh sometimes that's gonna be a big challenge especially for sometimes these more limited edition components with something like the apex or even something like the 4090 uh what does he use the system for gaming only that's it this is all about gaming so he likes to play some cyberpunk some uh, call of duty and some destiny all right. His favorite function or feature is that he loves the looks. He loves the wide community support as well that we offer in terms of the Maximus Apex and just its impressive overclocking capabilities. Man, uh, fantastic build. Great job overall. Nicely done there. All right. 
Uh, let me see right here. Quick question rounding things out. When will the ROG Strix G22 be available? I can't tell you actually in the EU. You would actually have to check with Asus in Europe. Uh, so I don't know, you know, whether you're talking about Germany or France, what, whatever country it might be in. Um, I can only comment on Asus North America because different regions have different kind of product matrices. So different products that they'll bring in and they have, of course, their own respective pricing. So I would recommend just go to the contact us portion on the Asus website for your country and reach out to them. Or you can sometimes maybe message them on their social channels in your corresponding country. So it could be Twitter, Instagram, whatever it might be, Facebook, and see if they can give you some insight in terms of G22CH availability. Um, that's a very cool, very, very interesting, compact, small form factor gaming system. All right, guys, so that wraps up our stream. Um, Normally we'd like to cover usually at least maybe about like five, six, maybe seven even systems in the PC Diary Web Builder Spotlight, but I've got a couple other things to take care of. So with that guys, that wraps up our stream as always. It's been fantastic uh, to be able to go ahead and give you guys all the latest and greatest updates for all things Asus. And hey guys, if you guys are not, make sure to go ahead and check out our Asus PC DIY group. It's a great community. Like I said, that we have a PC DIY enthusiast. We'd love to see you there. So as always guys, take care, take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fantastic Friday night and uh, enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, stay, stay healthy, and best of luck with your builds. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.